Good evening to you laddies, lassies, and those who fall in between or beyond. I am not Irish, nor do I want to pretend to be. But in celebration of St. Patrick's Day coming up, I believe this weekend or so, well, there's a need for cocktails. There's a need for celebration. There's a need for finding gearing out what is on the other end of the cocktail rainbow. And lucky for you, the end of the cocktail rainbow is right here, and it's the current recipe, which is currently nothing right now, but that is about to change in a moment. St. Patty's Day is a holiday that has popped up a couple different times in my life, or I guess technically so far, at least 24 times so far. Um, and it's always, it's when I got to college, St. Patty's Day was surrounded by a need for revelry and celebration and such. I'm not sure if it's like a common practice in other cities or elsewhere in the world, but the most popular thing to do basically un up until St. Patrick's Day and every Every weekend before it happens is something called Aaron Express here in Philadelphia. I don't know if it exists elsewhere. I imagine anybody's reason for going out and drinking leading up to St. Patrick's Day is going to happen no matter where you are, but in the spirit of things, uh, I have not gone out yet. Actually, I haven't gone out. No, I really haven't actually. Meeting up with some friends this Friday though. It's a technically a St. Patty's Day thing. In any case, every year so far since I came to college, there'd be folks going out and about. I lived in a fraternity house for at least two years, so we would have people over, we'd have parties and stuff. We'd, it would just be a disgusting time, all things considered. Fun and revelous, of course, but disgusting in the sense that everybody got like piss drunk. There was always so much beer and stuff. Although I did wind up figuring out an appreciation for uh, Guinness, which is uh, an Irish stout. That's, that's, that's really all I know about Guinness. I'll admit, I, I have said before already, I am not Irish. I don't know much about Irish history and stuff. The only thing that I know about the Irish, I guess, is about where Ireland is. I know that it's not Scotland, and I'm aware that for St. Patrick's Day, you, um, you get these really gaudy green stuff and whatnot. I grabbed this whole big bow tie at the store the other day, and um, lo and behold, I'm actually wearing a kilt right now, which I wanted to make sure was not just Scottish. Apparently it is also Irish. Um, and in the spirit of things, I really gussied up for today's stream because I like to put on outfits and stuff. And isn't that the type of energy that we're all here for? It's about, it's about celebrating. I personally wouldn't go out and about getting pissed drunk in this particular suit, which I believe happened to belong to my grandfather. Um, it was also the closest thing that I could find that was suited for, I guess, wearing a kilt below it. And yes, I am wearing what you could be consider pants underneath it. I'm not, I'm not that kind of girl, so to speak. But in any case, when we think of a St. Patrick's Day cocktail, what do we think of? Am I, when I think of St. Patrick's Day, when I think of cocktails, I think immediately of Irish stouts, specifically Guinness in this case. I think of things that are just green for no other reason than to just be green. One of the drinks that I, I think last year, I went down to South Carolina and I hung out with one of my friends for around the St. Patty's Day time. And literally what they were serving was just green beers and i was like oh my god like do they have a beer that's got some sort of coloration that makes it green that doesn't come from like food dyes and stuff but i literally watched the guy pour out some michelob ultra into a beer uh, a beer pint and drop like four or five bits of green food coloring into it so naturally if green beers and stuff are your thing you got you got food coloring for that there, there's a purpose for those types of things green drinks may or may not be making an appearance tonight the other thing that I think of, aside from the, like, you know, Guinness being the Irish stout, are just things that are Irish, things that are Irish in general. And so I wanted to see how I could explore Irish whiskey. In particular, the one that's important in my life, I guess, is the classic Jameson bottle of Irish whiskey. In this case, triple distilled, smooth Irish whiskey made, made the John Jameson way since 1780. I don't know if that is a particularly important year in Irish history or otherwise, but gosh, gosh golly, we're gonna go for it anyways. For some reason, when I first started drinking, I found that a shot of Jameson always went down smoother than anything else I was drinking. To be fair, it might have been the most high class, I guess, bottle that I had access to in the fraternity era before I could go to the liquor store and buy my own stuff, which absolutely did not happen because I, I only started drinking after I turned 21, obviously. But so in that, in that case, I also have reflux problem, problems, acid reflux problems. Don't exactly know where they come from, but for some reason, Jameson, John Jameson's method since 17, was it 60 or 80, 1780 or whatever, just goes down smoothly. I just, I like the way that a Jameson, Jameson shot tastes. And since that time, I've also fell in love with Tillamore Dew, which I believe is also an Irish-based spirit. And honestly, I haven't gone a lot, a lot onto the realms of various, uh, various scotches and stuff yet. Scotch was not something I wanted to play around with. That's a, that's a, that's a whole topic for another theme in general. 
Anderson says, Paddy's Day is huge in Edinburgh. Lots of Irish pubs here, and they are tough to get into after 11 a.m. Lots of Irish students. I can really imagine so, Anderson. I, I can just think of the crowds and crowds of people that I would see just flocking through the streets of Philadelphia so far every weekend leading up to this weekend being St. Paddy's Day, obviously. It's just like, it's just, you could tell the look on someone's face as they were walking down the road. If they had a little bit of green on, maybe they had a little, like a, I don't know, they, they just wore the greenish shirt that they have. You could see it in their eyes. It was a little bit hazy because this probably wasn't their first bar of the day. And to be fair, the last time I went out, which was on set, which was last Sunday in terms of out and about in the city, I got up at about like noon. I was out by like one o'clock in the afternoon-ish and I saw people like zombified walking down the streets, their green as green can be shirt that's got a little bit of a belch stain on it. What looks to be maybe a brown baggie that could have already been half full or half empty. It's just, it's got that aesthetic to it. People just go out and go wild on these things. And I have gone wild once or twice in the celebration of St. Patty's Day. And uh, some of the cocktails that I will be covering this evening are some of my favorites from those times. In particular, one which is Irish shot, which used to be called an Irish car bomb. I plan on having one of those because I got the Guinness bottle for it. I've never had a black velvet, which combines champagne and Guinness together or Irish stout in general. I want to try one of those. And also some other things to use because I've only ever had Jameson shots and I want to know how to use Irish whiskey in the best ways possible. Not to say that this particular cocktail curation here is going to be the best way possible to make your Irish whiskeys. If you have recommendations, I'm totally open to them or any other recommendations for Irish whiskeys in general as well because it's all about learning here. But enough about talking and stuff. We came for cocktails. So let's jump into some cocktails. I'll be putting my Jameson away for now and starting things off simply. As I mentioned before, there is a cocktail out there. It's technically considered a cocktail, I suppose. It's a, it's a spirit libation that combines champagne, or whatever you have equivalently. If you're going out for St. Patty's Day, I'm sure you don't have, you're not gonna, I feel like you're not gonna use the expensive bottle of champagne on a black and velvet, or maybe you do. And you could combine it with Irish stout. Maybe you'd go all out and you would use the Guinness, which I happen to do, unless there are other better Irish stouts out there. I really don't know. This was the one that I could get my hands on the quickest. So the first thing we'll start with is a black velvet. I will take my marker of doom and write it on up here, black. Velvet. Unfortunately, I can't write on the board in black because otherwise it just would not be visible. This thing is giving me a hard time today. Gotta get more. There we go, that's a little bit better. I think some of my white markers are running low. It just it happens when you're writing literally all the time with them. So a black velvet, according to the Guinness website itself, is half of a flute, or about 90 milliliters in this case, of champagne. That's about like like three, three ounces about as well, and then half a flute full of Guinness Original. Again, I did not go to the store and buy myself champagne. I looked, I actually thought about it because I asked Anna to go to the store and buy me some champagne. She's like, sparkling wine, right? I was like, yeah, technically. And she bought some Prosecco, which is sparkling wine, which you could consider is a, an effective champagne in terms of the bubbliness. Technically, the two are different. I believe Prosecco is a little more sweet and champagne is more on the drier side, but I guess it depends on what kind of champagne you're grabbing. But it's really whatever you may ask you access to. If you are an Aaron Expresser, you probably don't want to spend the 30 bucks on a whole bottle of champagne if you're just going to down black velvets and stuff all day. You only need half a flute's worth, unless you're going to drink an entire champagne bottle's worth of half flute fulls for your black velvets, in which case you're going to need an entire case of Guinness too, which I happen to pick up for myself. But at least one Guinness will be used for this for this cocktail recipe. It's interesting. This These particular Guinness uh, ones are the stouts that come in the like nitro container, I believe, because there's a little ball on the inside that nitrogenates. The, the the beer on the inside to make it more smooth as as the can on the front says adding nitrogen to a a drink will kind of it gives it, it for lack of a better term it kind of smooths it out you can do this to your stouts to your beers in general you can do this to coffees and stuff there's actually a coffee place around here called la colombe that was i believe it was done here in Philadelphia that nitrogenates their coffees. And it's got a cool like little fizzing sound when we open up the can, which we'll get to because I like the way that everything sounds. And I guess that type of cocktail ASMR content is oh so popular. The kids love it these days. Not the kids, the people over the age of 21, obviously. But the kids like the fizzy can stuff, we're, we're all into that. So the first thing that we'll do is we're going to make ourselves our black velvet. You will grab a champagne flute, a champagne flute, or whatever flute that you have. I have taller ones. I want to use the one that says Mrs. on it because it's the one that doesn't have the crack in it because the Mrs. is perfect. But even with the cracks, the Mrs. The Mrs. is also perfect. Even with the cracks, the Mr. glass is also 
effectively perfect. Who wants to be perfect anyway? Imperfect's the best way to go. And again, how to make a black velvet? Just mix your mix your equal parts and fill up your champagne for the So first, I guess it doesn't doesn't matter what order you put it in. It says here to put the champagne first. So I'm gonna go for it. And I quote, I did get this from the Guinness website officially. They say 160 years since its creation, this is still a much loved drink around the world. A curiously silky, velvety drink with the effervescence and dry biscuit notes of sparkling wine provide a curious coupling with Guinness Original served in a champagne flute for a touch of decadence. So that's why you're using the champagne flute here. It is just for your decadence. You could very well as easily grab yourself a Stein, put an entire growler's worth, or I guess, I don't know what this can is considered to be called, of your Irish stout in there, a Guinness equivalent, and your expensive champagne. I feel like if you're going for the $30 bottle of champagne, then you've opted for the decadence, uh, beyond the glass. You went for the spirit instead, and that's your prerogative. I didn't decide to do it this time. I already spent money on other things, of course. So, how do you do it? How, how does one do it? Well, step number one, crack open your Guinness. You hear that little squeaking sound? Oh, <laughs> it made another little squeaking sound at the end too. It's because there's actually a little ball on the inside of this can that I guess like Maybe it has nitrogen inside of it. I don't exactly know how the apparatus itself works, but now it is nitrogenated. And we also need champagne, naturally. And I have I have uh, Prosecco in its place. This is 90 plus, 90 plus cellars, Prosecco. Denominazione di origine controllata. I do not know what that means, and I don't think I pronounced it correctly, but that's fine. It's St. Patty's Day. I don't think it's about... If you're speaking your words correctly, I don't think that's a very St. Patty's thing to do. Um, this bottle doesn't really provide an easy way to, like, open it up. So, oh, actually, I was able to just straight up turn it. Okay. Oh! And I apparently am also able to just twist it at the top. There we go. It doesn't have that same satisfying popping sound. So, what do you do? Naturally, you fill up your champagne flute. Let's go over to the cocktail angle and watch it all in action! In action, in accident. Watch it all in accident. Why don't we? Your champagne flute, sir, or madam, or those in between and beyond. You must first take. I don't know why I'm British this time, anyways. Your champagne. Look at the bubbliness. Oh, isn't the bubbliness beautiful? I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that that is about halfway. Almost halfway. Almost halfway. We're getting there. We're getting there. Prosecco, prosecco, champagne. I'm gonna say at the bottom of the. The characters. Those. That is about halfway through this glass here, I guess. And then, top it off with your Irish stout, your Guinness. All the way up to the top. It's got a nice head to it, as Guinness often does, and it com kind of combines with the bubbliness of the champagne, too, to give something beautiful like this. Very, very nice. The black velvet. Actually, I love the way that looks with the head as well. Ooh. Cameron's gonna take a photo for his reference. I love the way that looks. My goodness gracious, that looks delightful. Is it delightful? That remains to be seen. I've never actually had a black velvet before. I've known about this cocktail. I keep wanting to call it a cocktail. Let's let's not discuss the nuances of what exactly a cocktail is or what exactly a cocktail ain't, unless we want to, in which case, <laughs> delicious. I will keep some of that for later. Um, but alas, it's nice. It's got a cool head that's formed on the top of it. It smells like... Honestly, smells more like champagne than it does a Guinness. Kind of okay with that. But I've known about this for a very long time. And it's a very, very simple drink to make. I don't know if it's worth it. We're about to find out. But um, I just never made it because I don't think I ever found myself in the same place of champagne as champagne and Guinness and remembered that this drink existed enough for me to put it together. So, black velvet. Mmm. I like that. There is a certain, and I don't know if it's coming from the Prosecco or the Guinness, but there's a certain metallic -y taste to it. Actually, you know what we could do? We, we, are, we are people of glass here. So we'll take a couple of cordial glasses. And we'll see, it's a very, it's only got two ingredients in it. So there's some Guinness on one hand, and there is some Champagne Prosecco on the other hand. Also, I just noticed my gaming chair is up and it is completely blocking the view of the bar. Completely forgot that. We'll put that on the ground. Now we can see the bar completely. Dude, can't say so much. There's so much to remember for these streams. It's just wild. It's not a very easy system. Then, I'm going to take 
Prosecco. And I kind of want to see what the, where these different flavors are coming from. I want to say there's a, there's a little bit of a metallic note there, and it's either the Guinness or the Prosecco. I've never tried this particular Prosecco before, but I've had a bit of the Guinness in the past. And, well, let's see. Prosecco is more... It's, it's tart. It's bright. It's bubbly. It's citrusy almost but also got a little bit of like a like a like a creaminess but not like a like kind of like a buttercream almost it's kind of what i'm getting from this particular prosecco i don't know do they have tasting notes in the back no it's just a brute italian sparkling wine i'll take it produced by cvbm salgareda tv italia love that by the latitude beverage company in boston it was what it was imported by and guinness on the other hand maybe is that where that metallic is coming from Deep, little little bit of a bitterness to it. A little, just a little bit, not too much. I feel a little bit metallic, I think. And I don't know if that's because when you serve a Guinness, I know that there are entire competitions are, uh, in various parts of, of the world that are purely based off of a, a, I guess, a brewmaster or a bartender's way of pouring out the Guinness. Supposedly, if you were to pour a Guinness, I don't know if it's a matter of technique, the, the head is so thick that you could float a coin on top of it. Now, personally, I don't really feel like taking that chance today. I do have pint glasses and whatnot, but I don't really feel like putting it. This is about cocktails. It's not about density. We're not making anything here. Although, at some point, I want to brew my own uh, spirits and libations. Actually, last week, after Glenn and I killed a pineapple on stream, we I took the um, I took the scraps of the pineapple and I put it into a container with some water, brown sugar, and a couple of cloves and a cinnamon stick as well because of a video that I found online and created a libation known as tipache, which fermented a little bit in the next one to two days. It smells a little bit like like uh, formaldehyde, acetyl formaldehyde, uh, but apparently according to the internet that is okay. It tastes pretty good and I drank a whole wine glass full of it and I'm not dead yet nor did I have two bad stomach pains. So I plan on bringing it to my pal's house on a Saturday to uh, to share with them because he said he's got some meat for me to try. I don't know if he made it or not yet, but I want to try it anyways. So overall, black and velvet's really nice. There's a bright flavor that is a little metallic-y, I'd say. It's almost like pith of a pith of a fruit. It's almost, oh, it's, mel it's almost melony. I'd say that there is a certain like melonness to this. Like a, like a honeydew, specifically. And I'm guessing that that's probably a characteristic of the Prosecco. To my knowledge, nobody describes Guinness as tasting fruity. Um, more like chocolate, coffee, deep notes, stuff like that. Uh, but the, the Prosecco might actually have those melon notes that are being accentuated by the Guinness in this case. I think the aspects of the Guinness that are a little more coffee-like are the things that are still there. Uh, the, the more chocolatey notes, I think, are actually a little more muted. I found, in the past, I've had Guinness, like, Guinness drinks, I guess. It's, it's all the same, I suppose. That's a little more flavor forward, and I suppose it's probably because of the nitrogenization. The nitrogenization adds, like, a smoothness to it, so I think that's probably what I'm experiencing here. Not as much bold, bold flavor. Still the classic Guinness taste that people like, but the texture plays a mean component there. At least, that's what I would think. It's very tasty. I really like that. I honestly think it could probably use more Guinness. And maybe, I, I feel like I poured more Guinness than I did Prosecco into, but the Prosecco flavor is actually really strong there. So I want to add a bit more and see if I can get a better, uh, one more Guinness forward. So currently, it was presently, previously, I like half and half Guinness and Champagne. Again, you can probably adjust the proportions based on what you like. If you know you love your Prosecco, fill it up some more. If you know you like your Guinness, fill it up some more with that. The ratio is up to you. Although I guess traditionally it's half and half. I actually like that kind of better now. I think the adding more Guinness in this case as opposed to the Prosecco, and, and again, another thing that I should note, the disclaimer is this is Prosecco, this is not Champagne. It's notably more sweet than a Champagne would be. So that's why I need to add more Guinness to it. I like that with more, I like that with a higher percentage of the beer to it, the Guinness. I think it's, it's more to my flavor preferences, mostly because things that are very, very fruit forward, things that are very sweet and bright and citrusy, kind of, I don't know, they, they sit weird with me. I'm not a big fan of sour things and it's almost a little bit sour and I want more of those bitter notes back when you add the Guinness to it. I'm definitely a fan of that. I like that a lot more.
Honestly, to be perfectly honest, if all you had was a tiny little bottle of Prosecco and one can of Guinness, this could this could last you for a little while. I mean, it's not going to last you that long, to be honest. There's there's about half a bottle left of the Prosecco and like maybe almost half a can left of the Guinness. This could last you for a while, though. It's a it's good. I like it. If you like, if you know you don't like Prosecco, this is probably not going to work for you. If you know you don't like Guinness, well, second verse, same with the first, I suppose. In any case, that's pretty good. Oh, put the rest of my tiny glasses back in there. And because I added a little more Prosecco, I'm going to add my Guinness back. Just to even things out for my preferences. I like this so far, so I'm going to keep this behind the bar with me. Let's see, Prosecco and the rest of the open Guinness are gonna go in a different container. I do plan on drinking that later, naturally. It's not gonna have the same feel and flavor and stuff to it because naturally as it kind of oxidizes, it's gonna change its flavor because I nitrogenated it. So that the nitrogen is just gonna go away eventually. It's something that a future camera gets to worry about. A future drunker camera perhaps? I'm not really sure. That's the spirit, man. It's all about going to the to the Saint to the Saint Patty's bars and the Irish pubs and getting your Guinnesses on. I think there's a bar around here that I freak. I don't frequent. I don't really frequent many bars around here. But when I would go out with my with my buddies and stuff, I want to say the term McCarthy's come to mind. But for some reason, I feel that I might just be getting myself mixed up between this Mick and all the other Micks out there. And I don't know if that's like the wrong thing to say or whatever, but there are a lot of Micks. One of my friends is Irish, and he's very, very prideful in the fact that his name used to be Mick, what it is now. And he's like, very, very proud of that. Very proud of my history. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure you are, man. I'm sure you are. I didn't used to be a McElf. To my knowledge, there is no Irish in my blood. There's any... I don't think there's any like Celtic roots in my blood. Supposedly, the name Cameron comes from the Gaelic, and I think that's either Germanic or Celtic or somewhere in between. Again, not a history guy, so I wouldn't really know. The black velvet is easy. The black black velvet is nice. It's tasty. It can be more Guinness or less Guinness. It can be more champagne or prosecco or less champagne or prosecco, depending on how you like it. I like mine a bit more Guinness than I do my prosecco. Um, if you had champagne, you could try that as well. And to be fair. Probably could have tried multiple of them, but I didn't think about that until now. There's at least five other cocktails that we're planning on getting to tonight. So a quick one to get out of the way, I think, is a, a nice way to get things started. As always, if you're going to serve yourself a drink, naturally, get yourself a coaster. This is a very light drink, and this coaster is very hard, and it doesn't like this doesn't like to stay secure. Don't I scare myself, especially with the especially with the champagne flute, because sh th they wouldn't be the first flute to fling itself onto the ground and just absolutely crack itself open um in this in this apartment at this at this bar at this particular establishment so that was the black velvet it's easy it's, it's tasty it, it uh, it's got guinness and champagne that's literally it what a way to get things started but what's next what do we have other cocktails this evening as well i'm also curious too to pose the question to anybody else out there who celebrates saint patrick's day or goes out for air and express and stuff is there a favorite use for your irish whiskey is there a favorite drink that you would have around this particular holiday season and if there's a favorite beer too because i feel like there's a lot of emphasis on either irish stouts beers or beers in general i am very curious i'd like to think that i can i will slowly but surely wean myself more so into the beer world um and the wine world it's just it's just complicated man like, I feel like I get so intimidated going into a beer store because I don't necessarily know what it is I'm looking for. Same thing with the wine, too. But then again, once upon a time, I felt that way about liquors and stuff as well. Um, but I guess I still kind of feel that way towards liquors because I still go to the whiskey, the whiskey section and I'm like, um, or I go to the gin section, which is notably smaller, but I'm still like, there's like four of them here. What's the difference? I don't know. But as you, you learn like different terms and stuff, you I guess you learn things along the way. I'm still very early on in my learning journey. So, what's next? What else have we got on our list? Let's see. We started off with something simple, a black velvet. Using your Guinness, your Irish stout, whatever you have that's favored. One thing that comes next, I think, to, when, I, when I think of things is, if you want to go Irish, you think of Irish whiskey, right? If you think of whiskey, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? What is the first cocktail that comes to your mind? In some cases, some would say an old-fashioned comes to mind. And so there's at least one restaurant that a friend of mine pointed me to a, re uh, a recipe of, and it came from, specifically, Bulldog Burger. Bulldog Burger? From a place called Matt Bryan? Max Bryan? Or it might have been somebody named Max Bryan who put the Irish Old Fashioned on the menu for the Bulldog Burger. I don't know, all of a sudden was a, was a menu. And the menu had 
like credits for the people who made the cocktails and I think that's really cool but from the mind of Max Bryan comes an Irish old fashioned it's just like a regular old fashioned except as we covered I think it was two weeks ago where we did a couple of different old fashions there are many ways to old fashioned you could use your syrup you could use your cube you could use a muddled citrus you could not muddle your citrus you can add there's so many different ways to cocktail but in this case you're going to add your Irish whiskey in this case your simple syrup a uh, sugar cube and orange uh, and an orange slice. You're gonna combine all the different sugar stuff together. You're gonna do some orange bitters up on top, and obviously you should probably put a little orange twist on there at the end as well. It's quite simply an old fashioned with a little more on the bitter side, a bit more on the sweet, with Irish whiskey instead. And to be fair, when we did our old fashioned exploration the other week, I did not have this bottle of Jameson, so I'm actually very curious to see what it tastes like in an old fashioned. So that will be the one we do next. What were we on next? The Irish old fashioned. Old. The ye old fashioned. I don't know why I'm so inclined to use like old English when I'm when I'm thinking of I I guess I guess just St. Patrick's and the Irish, I suppose. So let's see. It's using Jameson. Jameson is a whiskey. It is in this case triple distilled. Irish whiskey. I'm actually curious to see what the mash bill is on this. I wonder. Alexa, what's the mash bill on Jameson Irish whiskey? From the smoothseeds.com. Produced and cut to bottle and strength with water from the Dunmany River. Dunmany River. The Jameson whiskeys are bottled at 40% alcohol by awesome. volume, 80 beef, or 80 proof. Yeah, but like you didn't tell me what the mash bill was, Alexa. That's so disappointing. I want to know what the mash... I want to know what kind of spirits are... Uh, what kind of greens are in this... Jameson mash bill? Tell me what's inside of it. Ever since like we did the deep dive into the other whiskeys and stuff, whiskeys and bourbons and rye and what have you, I was very curious. They claim green whiskey they use for their blend. How the world's best-selling Irish whiskey that gets made is 80% maize, which is a type, technically a type of corn, and 20% barley. It's got no corn in it. It's got no rye in it. None of that stuff. Which is probably why it tastes, at least to me, like distinctly different from other whiskeys that I've had. And this is actually a fresh bottle, so I will I'll give y'all the satisfaction of the... Dude, that is what it's all about. I've started seeing more... Uh, I've been watching more stuff, paying keener attention to the content that I surround myself with. And to be perfectly fair, I do love a nice cocktail ASMR video. And, um... At some point, maybe I get myself a little lavalier microphone that like goes on my lapel and I can just like put it right up next to the drink and you can hear the shakage and you can hear the porridge and you can hear the glug glug in the bottle and I, I, I don't really know. I don't know if that increases views and honestly, I'm not sure if I care. If I enjoy it, then it must happen. In any case, Irish whiskey, 80% maize, 20% barley was the other one there um they said something about the the proof at which it gets bottled at and the various other processes it uses water from i think it was the the do something the do something river oh my god i can't remember what it was in any case it's a river and i'm inclined to think that it's in ireland hence the whole irish whiskey thing to me it smells whiskey -y. However, it's not the same type of whiskey -y as I did, did get from the other whiskeys and bourbons that I have. It tastes a lot more... It smells more... Almost almost pancake-y. Like, it's, it's almost like a fresh flapjack when I, when I give it a smell. Not in terms of, like, butter or in terms of, like, maple syrup or anything like that. Just, like, when I smell this, I think of, like, bread. I think of flour. And it smells really, really nice. And honestly, if I'm doing this, I really should have done it in a snifter glass, but I have my little cordial glass to uh, to sip things in. Because I'm, I'm going to go through those first. It's just like, it almost smells sweet. I like that. And it's got a nice, it's a, dead, a very yellow color. I don't have like a plain background to compare things against, but take a, take a look at, oh, don't, don't fall over. Here's my best representation of the color of Jameson Iris whiskey. Actually, I can do this. Here are my blinds. This is what it looks like. This is the color of Jameson Irish Iris Whiskey, at least as it stands in my particular cordial glass. That's that's what we're putting in our mouth. That's what we're putting down our gullet. It smells good. I like it. And as I said before, I find that Irish the Jameson Irish Whiskey goes down very pleasantly. I want to sip it first, because I never actually tasted it like this. It's 
It's just so pleasant. I like that. There's there's a certain like I feel like what what is the proof on this guy? Forty something? Oh, sorry, alcohol. That's what I meant by proof. I meant alcohol. It's exactly forty percent by volume, so eighty proof there. I just I feel like when it hits my tongue and evaporates and tastes and stuff, it just feels smooth. I like I don't really know how else to describe it. Not not smooth. Well, yeah, so I was kind of trying to think like a different type of smoothness than the Guinness. Like, I don't, I don't know. It almost feels like a very similar type of smooth. It's almost lean, like buttery in terms of its smoothness. It's like glides like butter. And you know, honestly, there is almost a butter component there, like a warm butter, like on a flapjack. I'm also getting like, I'm just, I'm just reminding myself of this bottle of whipped vodka that I just, I didn't discover it. I've always known about it, but. I cracked it open the other night and gave it a whiff, and it just almost seems like whipped cream almost. There's almost something whipped creamy about this. It's just, I like it. I, for some reason, just really, really like Jameson Irish whiskey. And the fact that the only bottle that's ever come into my collection popped into my collection three days ago, I'm actually quite surprised. But I have a very short attention span, and my long-term, short-term memory, my LS long-term, LT, long short-term memory, my LSTMs, just to... Oh, I'm getting so old. I'm drinking more alcohol. My brain is deteriorating. That's delicious. It just goes down so smoothly. Like, I don't get that... I don't get that... Bleh, effect, like, with some other whiskeys. And I don't really know what it is about it. Maybe it's the fact that it's mostly that 80% that of the maize in there. Sort of corny. Maybe it's the barley. I genuinely don't know. I also think, too, compared to the other whiskeys and stuff, some of them did have barley in it, but I don't think any of them... It had plain barley. It was malted barley. So I wonder I wonder what there is to say about that. A whiskey aficionado would know better than I. And I don't know much at all. I'm just mixing cocktails. So to make our Irish old fashioned, the, the way that it says here is we're going to, it doesn't have a, it came from a menu like you would find at a restaurant. So it doesn't say the method and stuff, but I think the best way to do it would probably be to just kind of, because we're adding a sugar cube, we're going to put it into the glass. You're going to muddle things up with an orange peel. We're going to pour some stuff on top of it. And that's just going to be it. We're going to give it a little bit of a stir to dilute it just a little bit with a big old cube and then express some oil on top of it. And I think that'll be all we need or an Irish old fashioned to make the most of, or at least learn a little bit, to learn about another angle for our Jameson Irish whiskey, triple distilled, established in the grand year of our Lord, 1780, 1780. We are now in our Lord's year of 2023, and we're drinking history or something. So, grab yourself a glass. I'm gonna take the most Irish thing in my collection, which is a glass with a zip code in Vermont. How Irish is that? Maybe just as Irish as the Irish whiskey, I'm not really sure. We're gonna need ourselves a sugar cube. We're gonna need ourselves as well a peel of an orange. So I'm gonna go into my sugar cube collection, which uh, I made a couple of sugar cubes. They're not not very cubey. They're, uh, I'll sh th these are handmade sugar cubes. Uh, they're not they're not super cubey to be perfectly honest, but uh, I think they get the job done. And I'm, and I'm proud of them, honestly. I think that my sugar cubes are really kind of on the small side. So I'm gonna add two of them in there. Um, because they're not as big as, like, when I think of a sugar cube, like, when I went to the store and bought sugar cubes, I saw brown sugar sugar cubes, and they were, like, heaping. They were, like, it was the size of my thumb. These are, like, not even the size of my pinky. So I'm going to add two in there. Then I'm going to grab myself an orange, preferably one that I got uh, recently. I bought these at the store yesterday. I also have one from last week as well. It's probably going to turn into juice. Uh, I need to I need to make myself some orange juice. And give it a peel. Now, again, I'm also garnishing this with a peel. This particularly calls for a orange peel muddled at the bottom with the sugar. So we're just going to follow the instructions, but I want to make sure I garnish it properly with a proper orange peel. Got a nice hefty peel on there. Drop it to the bottom. And I'll put that back in my thing for later. I'm just going to get gather yourself a muddler. You know what? Just just muddle it at the bottom. That's that's kind of kind of all it is. I don't know. Give it, a, give it a muddle. There's a bit of sugar in there. Essentially what you're doing, because you got a peel down there, the muddling process is going to allow the sugar to get really, really close to the little cells that are on the outside of the, the orange peel. The tiny little almost pores that you see in there. And the sugar is quite literally going to kind of, kind of coerce the oils out of the edge of the peel there. If you leave this sugar peel mess for a while longer with more peels and perhaps more sugar all over the peels, you will find that a liquid forms, a syrup of sorts, that you can call oleosaccharum because it's called 
oleosaccharum. What exactly that translates to? Alexa, translate oleosaccharum for me while I muddle. Or Alexa doesn't happen to listen to me at all, and I'm just here on my own looking like a fool. It's from the Latin, I believe. And that's that's as far as I'm going with that one. I muddled it. My mu the, the muddleage is done. And now what do you do? Well, next you're going to add yourself... Uh, I, I don't know if you have to add the... Come to think of it, do you add the sweetener first, and then the whiskey? Because it calls for simple syrup? Or perhaps the other way around? I mean, technically, well, there's already a sugar cube in there that's been crushed up, so you've already added the sweet. Do you add more of the sweet? Do you add the whiskey first? I genuinely don't know. I'm thinking of it this way. There is a peel in there. There's not a lot of pith on it, but I would think if we were amateurs, and we, because I am, and there is more pith on that down there, the alcohol is going to rip some of the flavor out from that peel. And the longer it sits on the peel, the longer it takes those flavors. And the flavor of the peel is bitter and unpleasant. So I think what I want to do is I want to go the uh, another rule that says you put your least expensive ingredients in there first, but also because like science of osmosis and stuff, I'm not really sure. So I'm gonna add my simple syrup first. Usually I go to my fridge, but I decide, I, I remember that I have a freezer from when we used to do this bar stream on literally a fold-out table. So I actually have my syrup, literally, all my things from the fridge, literally right behind me. Just makes things so much easier. We get quicker at this whole bar thing. I think my speech is actually getting quicker too, which is unfortunate. I should really learn how to slow the heck down to enjoy things a little bit more. So if I'm going to add about two ounces or 59 milliliters of our spirit, our Irish whiskey, I'm going to add like... I'm inclined to think that we add a half an ounce or like 15 milliliters of the simple syrup, but I already have sugar in there. So I think I'm just gonna opt for like a quarter of an ounce or about seven-ish milliliters because I just, I feel like there's already a lot of sweetness going on in there. And I don't really wanna, I don't wanna exacerbate that any more so than I already am. This syrup is uh, from the Elden days before I learned my lesson of creating syrups and stuff. Uh, when you create a syrup, when it calls for equal parts, for example, a one-to-one -one ratio or a one-to-two ratio, it is between the volume of the water and the weight of the sugar. For example, if I'm, if I'm quoting this correctly, I I'll have to double check my sources. Um, but if I'm correct in saying, if you want to do a one-to-one -one syrup and you have a cup of water, which is some number of milliliters, Let's just say you have 100 milliliters of water, you're gonna combine that with 100 grams of sugar. That is a one-to-one -one ratio by volume, I think. Perhaps. Because you wouldn't wanna use also 100 milliliters of sugar because I think sugar has a different density than water does and something works out there. Again, I should probably do more research on this, but I don't have that yet. Experience and stuff comes with time, so we just wait until that time comes. And then I'm gonna add two ounces of our spirit of choice. Make sure that I'm not forgetting. You know what? I'm not even going to check the recipe. I know that I'm not forgetting anything. I am so overly confident today because we've already got alcohol in me. Two ounces. That's 59, 60 milliliters. And if you're using a metric jigger, it's probably going to be about 50 milliliters because that's what those things matter up to. Your Irish whiskey. I got a little bit of simple syrup on my fingies and I am... I'm just have I'm having a day. Having a beautiful day. It's actually very, very sticky and it's kind of unpleasant, so... Let me, let me do a little, do a little wash, a little bit of, this is the sound that I make when I wash my fingies off and then use it to use my little towel. Oh goodness gracious, goodness gracious indeed. In any case, I added my spirit, I added the sugar twice now, and I've also added the orange. So according to the Bulldog Diner, Bulldog Cafe, whatever it was, I'm doing things correctly. Now. I need to do is I need to add some bitters on it. It says orange bitters, but I'm gonna wait for a second. I'm gonna add my ice first so I can get this thing kind of properly diluted, properly chilled, and I'm gonna add the bitters on top. Again, there is a lot of technique that goes into making old fashions, and I for one haven't perfected my own technique yet. I can only just barely remember what kind of ratios and stuff that I do, and also what I like personally for myself. I think I like more on the syrup side as opposed to the sugar cube side, but I haven't had all the sugar cubes out there. I think I'm more inclined to not muddle the fruit at the bottom, but but I really haven't done that very often. So whatever you wind up finding for yourself is probably going to be the correct answer if you find that it tastes good. I like my old fashions more so on the sweeter side, which is why I opt for the syrup. But again, your choice. You do whatever you want. So long as you so long as you follow the rules. That's why there are no rules. Oh my goodness, my glasses fell. Also, my ice is being a little difficult with me today, so please, please bear with me. I just made it last night, and uh, I realize I still have crushed ice in this fridge. I'm gonna have my buddy on last week. Um, yeah. I didn't actually use the crushed ice. I just haven't used it, and I realize it takes up a lot more volume 
in the in the freezer than I thought it did. So um, let's go ahead and add ourselves a. I put my sunglasses, my my fancy green glasses back on my head. We'll put our ice cube in there. And before we do so, we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll learn to appreciate it. I suppose we'll bring this cocktail angle down. See if I can set this up properly before I click the button. I should probably learn how to use studio mode on OBS because currently I don't do that. How does it look? Well, okay, I was I was close. Let's move it a little bit closer. This is our old fashioned. I'm going to add my cube to it. I've been holding it a little too long in my finger. I want to do the flat side. These ice cubes are a little asymmetric. It's going to take up a lot more space in that glass now, naturally. It's perfect, perfect proportions. Give that a bit of a stir. Um, I've been told seven is heaven. I've been told don't do more than six or eight or otherwise. There's supposedly science behind that. I don't know. I like to I like to talk. I like to stir. I like to stare at the beautiful people. Staring contest. Oh no, I lose because I think I ran out of time with my stirrage. We'll put that back over here. Next, we're going to add our orange bitters on top of it, naturally. And then we're going to express an orange peel and drop it in and make it look all pretty. So here's your two dashes. could probably use three. I think, I think I'll just go with two dashes for now. A little more conservative on the dashes today because there's a whole shit ton of sugar in there. Got the stuff an orange. We're going to peel that orange in the best way possible. Hopefully not taking the sticker along with you. That would be unfortunate. We'll put that on my face for now and hopefully not forget about it. And I'll give it a, give it a peel in the background. Oh my goodness, I'm getting better at my peeling. Great. Now I just gotta get better on the presentation. Express the Orioles. Rim the glass. This is this is just technique. Nobody told me to do this. And just like drop it on in there. Beautiful. What a beautiful, what a beautiful, beautiful old fashioned there. Or so so they keep telling me. Isn't that lovely? I think it is. Beautiful. I'll put my cocktail camera back over there. I don't need that anymore. I've been finding, too, one of the things that I enjoy doing with my drinks. Oh, look, a sticker. I had pfft, quite literally almost forgotten about that. Incredible. But I like to take the pictures of the cocktails. I like to memorialize them later by putting them on, like, Instagram and this site called Crafted Pour as well. Just to, like, remember, like, because personally, I suffer from not remembering what drinks I thought were good or what even my thoughts were on the drinks. So I memorialize them in that fashion, not necessarily for the people to see, but mostly so that I can remember, like, five years from now that this particular old-fashioned was good. Or I liked it the way that I made it, or the way that somebody else told me to make it, as opposed to the other old fashioned. Because I don't think, think none of the old fashions from two weeks ago from the There's Corn in Your Cocktail stream really, really hit it home for me. Um, maybe this one will, because it's actually got syrup in it. Maybe I should have done the other ones better. I'm not so sure. In any case, this is an Irish old fashioned, just like a regular old fashioned, except you're swapping out the, I guess, bourbon or rye or other sort of whiskey there with an Irish whiskey instead, which I tasted a little bit before. It reminds me of flapjacks without the butter or the maple. But then I took a sip of it and the butter part kind of came back and I loved it. I thought it was great. So cheers to all the folks at home. It smells so prominently of those orange bitters that I put up the top, on the top. It's a it's Angostura. I really don't use many other bitters aside from the Angostura ones because I just don't know how to properly use them. I was at the store the other day and I wanted to buy more bitters. I saw actually I was at the Philadelphia Flower Show and I saw this place that was selling a bunch of different types of types of bitters. They had like their like CBD bitters. They had like their grapefruit bitters. They had like pomegranate bitters. They had like like botanicals that I'd never heard of, bitters. And I was like, man, I want these, but I really don't know the best way to use them. So one of the things that I try to do in my journey to become a better mixologist is I'll try to take some of these drinks that call for a couple of dashes of a bitters and I'll make them the same way every single time, except for the bitters. I'll try to swap it out. I'm trying to get a little bit better at that. I think what's presently caught my caught my attention is I really, really like Negronis. I bought myself a bottle of Amaro Nonino. I'm trying to make a couple more paper planes or Negroni riffs uh, just, to, just to try to see. It doesn't involve the bitters. But I could add bitters. We can do whatever we want to when we're the ones drinking. Sardonic Jeff says, do you have peppermint? It could be St. Peppermint Patty's Day drinks. I do have, well, let's see. I have peppermint schnapps. I got peppermint schnapps down here. What goes well with peppermint? I am curious if there's an idea or a request for a peppermint, St. A Saint Peppermint Patty's Day drink. I'm curious about it. I don't know what goes well with, well, actually, actually, hold up a second. One of the drinks I have definitely has mint in it. And let me see which one that is. And see whether it would be. Oh, you know, hmm, hmm. You might be onto something, Jeff. Peppermint and or mint in general will make a return. It absolutely will. Hell, you know what? We'll just do that next because I want to do that one anyways. So we'll go for it. Excellent, excellent idea, Jeff. Mind meld. Irish old fashioned. I was, I was. 
reminiscing on life, I suppose. It's 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 fine. That's why that's why we drink because the life is behind us. But life is also ahead of us. Ooh. Damn, it's good. I love that. I, I had mentioned that I like my old fashioned more so on the sweeter side. I, I actually, I dulled down on the sweetness. I was like, mm -mm -mm, I don't want to put a full half ounce of the syrup in there. I put a quarter ounce instead, about seven milliliters. And like, it's still really sweet. It's still so sweet. And I think it's just because like Jameson, I find is just like a sweeter whiskey to, admit to, to me. I don't know what it is about it. it. Reminds me of flapjacks and butter and stuff. And this is kind of like, if, oh my God, if I had any more maple syrup, Instead of using the simple, probably would have opted for the maple syrup because that would have completely put that whole like, I like that whole idea of what the flavor of Jameson was like, right in my glass. So to wh to whoever you are out there, Max Bryan at the Bulldog Diner Junction, whatever you were called, when you were on the road for the old Irish old fashioned, you you were hitting in the right direction. It's very pleasant to drink. I think for the most part, it is very sweet to me. You can very, very clearly taste the syrup that's in there. But, like, it's interesting, though, because there's only a quarter ounce of syrup in there, and there's two small sugar cubes at the bottom, and there's two whole ounces. There's a whole, like, almost 60 milliliters of the Jameson in there, of whiskey, and it's really hard to... It's hard to piece that out. I mean, it's very... It's it's obviously that there's whiskey in there. That's That's pretty evident. But, like, the sweetness is so palatable and so powerful that, like, I don't know. This feels dangerous to me. I know that there are people that they're a lot more sensitive to alcohol than I, apparently, but this is, in my opinion, overpowered by the syrup that I put into it. You could probably use less of that. I don't think, the recipe actually called for the simple syrup. It didn't tell me exactly how much, but I think even like a bar spoon of it would probably just be fine. Is really good. I'm also getting the hints of oh, those orange bitters a little bit are actually bringing another like um, it's like it's like it's like breakfast. It's almost like breakfast in a cup. My God, because I'm getting the the orange, I'm getting the flapjack, I'm getting the getting the butter and stuff on it, and getting a little bit of the syrup. It's like breakfast in a glass. This is a wonderful way. If you're trying to get like absolutely smashed for St. Patrick's Day and you've got a bottle of Jameson around and some syrup, you can make syrup and some orange bitters. You can just squeeze orange stuff onto it. This is an excellent way to start the day. This is awesome. Or an absolutely terrible way to end the day because you get to your last drink and you're like, oh man, I don't think I could do another one. Then take a sip of this and you're like, all right, maybe I could do one more. This is wonderful. The color looks delicious. It is a beautiful let me let me give my blinds again for a second my blinds are the best way for me to be able to showcase what color this thing is it's a bright and now granted that particular angle does not does not do the colors the same way as the other angle does but it is oh it almost looks like maple syrup this is also really good comparatively this is much more flavorful in my opinion it's a more powerful flavor it's not as complex and subtle a flavor as the black and velvet which is just champagne and guinness together if i had to pick one go with the irish whiskey in this case the irish old-fashioned that is delightful comparing the two side by side yeah the prosecco just gets weird after a while i don't know i'm not a big fan of prosecco anyways and to be fair it did call for champagne and we did opt for the Prosecco. That was on me, but... Mm. Mm. I'll put that up there. I have a new... I have a, the bartender has a new drink that he will be tasting. And it is... It's the Irish Old Fashioned. That's a... That's a good one. I really, really like that. And again, repeating the recipe for the sake of... For the sake of comprehension, it's just... It's got your Irish whiskey. It's got some sugar cubes. It's got some orange peels. There's two orange peels in there. Because that's what it's... This what it actually didn't specifically say to garnish with the orange peel. But I liked it. And it was good. And you got your Irish whiskey in there. And some bitters. Specifically orange bitters. It's a, it's a good set of bitters. It's, they're, they're good bitters. The, they're Angostura orange. They're good bitters. If I had to look upon the horizon and think about the bitters of the world and pick one bitters, I would very myopically choose... Ang very, very stereotypically choose Angostura, I suppose. Because it, it's good. They're good bitters. There's probably better bitters. But again, I don't know how the best way to use my bitters. So, uh, here we are. And a good day, indeed. Jeff says, anything with oranges in it, I find appealing. Get it? We peeled the orange. 
we did that. It's a thing that we did, and it was it was just as just as appealing when we did versus when we thought about when we did. And now that I look back on it, I think I need another drink, as it seems. So that's what we've done so far. I'm moving things rather quickly around here, I say, almost at the, I guess, almost at the 40, 50 ish minute mark here. It's all St. Patrick's Day cocktails. You can put, there's so many different ways to St. Patty's. St. Patty's, Aaron Express, St. Peppermint Patties, like Peppermint Patty. Dude, a York Pepper, dude, okay, so if you've ever had a haircut, here's how to, here's how to make yourself a, this is not Patty's Day related, but to make a haircut or to give your friend a haircut, simply set them into a chair, lean their heads back, Ask them to open their mouth consensually and begin to pour peppermint schnapps into their mouth until they say when. They can swallow if they want to. They can build up for the next part and then proceed to pour maple or sorry, not maple, chocolate syrup into their mouth. The Hershey's chocolate syrup I had in my case and the peppermint schnapps that I, I think were de Kuiper in my case taste like a liquid warm peppermint patty in your mouth. And it's Awesome. I don't have any maple syrup up here. Otherwise, I would probably. I could always. Go, I can go get maple syrup, but I'm not really in the mood for a haircut right now. I, I'm growing my hair out a little bit long. I've never had a haircut. Never had a haircut, dude. Give it a trim or something. No, those haircuts are good. Honestly, I'm trying to think of the best way to like make that like without the need for two people. I mean, you could very well just like take some peppermint schnapps, put some Hershey syrup in it, give it a mix, and just go for it. Just knock it on back. It would probably work too. It's a fact. I've never had a haircut, but I've had many hairs cut. Get it? Get it? This is what it's all about. I love it. So Jeff popped on here and said, reminded me that peppermint patties are a thing, or the fact that peppermint exists anyway. So I think the next cocktail that we're going to do is something that utilizes mint as a component. Because again, peppermint patty, it's it's a it's a word thing. You can you can look up at a dictionary or a thesaurus if you if you really want to. But the next cocktail that I have is from a drink a drink book that I have called 10 Thousand drinks by Paul Knorr, and somewhere around page 420 to 430 is a cocktail that they call Shamrock. There's also a Shamrock 2 in there, Electric Boogaloo. I added that one um, that use, that uses a different recipe, but I wanted this one because it has a minty component to it. The Shamrock number two, which I'm not going to cover, uses Irish whiskey, coffee liqueur, and Irish cream liqueur, which just kind of felt like almost kind of an Irish coffee, but not as good. So I did not opt for that one. Instead, a Shamrock uses Irish whiskey, dry vermouth, which is something I wanted to try with the Irish whiskey. And it said creme de menthe, but we can, we can use, we can use whatever we want to. I haven't used, I don't think I've ever used peppermint schnapps on stream before. Actually, I'm gonna try the two of them. I'm gonna see which one seems better with the Irish whiskey, because I have tried the Irish whiskey already. So I'm gonna actually see whether or not one is better than the other. So that's what comes next on the next thing here. I have a little, I have a goop in my eye. Please excuse me about that. Make a, clean that off. That's dis disgusting. My eyes are trying to escape from their sockets. That's what's next called Shamrock. Um, I, I don't know, do I write that in green? Does that feel on, does that feel on topic? Feels kind of on topic. Feels on topic. Yo, know, in spirit of the, of, the, of the Irish, I guess, I wrote Celtic knots, knots on my board. I don't know what any of them mean. I tried to look at definitions, and apparently I'm not as much a denizen of the internet that I thought because I could not find the one piece of information that I wanted out of Google. So if somebody knows, please educate me. When I looked inside of the kilt that I'm currently wearing, I am wearing a kilt. Here's my plan. Oh, there goes my sunglasses. In any case, that's fine. They're actually ladder shades. Um, I looked at, uh, inside of my kilt, it has some of these, like, little little whirly doos with the I don't know what you call it anyway shamrock kind of like the shake you know I actually I, I was seriously considering like seriously considering going to McDonald's and picking up like a shamrock shake for tonight's episode I didn't I, I didn't really know what to do with it to be perfectly honest what was I gonna do add Irish whiskey to a shamrock shake Woo, that's so fun you could try to kind of try to make our own in shamrock shakes but there's 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 plenty. I don't, I don't think we need that. Underbar mount cam, please. Oh my god, take a look at my kilts. Look at my kilt. I'm wearing my kilt. I'm trying not to knock things over. I got I got the new cocktail angle for a reason. Oh, look at my kilt. I'm wearing a kilt. I'm wearing a kilt. Look at me and my hairy legs. It's, it's me and my kilt. Sorry, NSFW. <laughs> I am wearing a kilt. My, actually, a uh, fun fact about me and my life. I, um... 
I uh, in middle in high school when I met my now fiance Anna, lovely person. She um I don't I don't ever remember what the joke was. I think they're really a fan of a series called Outlander, which I've never watched, and I want to say it's Scottish, but it could also be Irish. I'm not so sure. But somehow that related to me getting a kilt, and then I got a kilt, and I don't wear it very often. But I have, I have a kilt now, and it's beautiful. It's an, it's an authentic kilt. It really is. Uh, and I guess it comes from Ireland or Scotland. I'm not so sure. I specifically looked at the difference between an Irish kilt and a Scottish kilt, and I wasn't able to find anything that made me think that this couldn't be considered appropriate for an Irish St. Paddy's Day stream. So I haven't worn it in a while. So I decided to do so. So uh. Cheers to the kilt wearers out there! And onwards to a shamrock. So how do we make a shamrock? Well, not that difficult. Take some Irish whiskey, dry vermouth, and a splash of cran de, cran de menthe, or something pepperminty. I am curious to see whether it's better to use, let's say, peppermint schnapps or creme de menthe, because to be perfectly honest, up until this moment, I really haven't played much with either of them. Creme de menthe doesn't happen very often. Minty flavors are usually covered by, like, slapping some mint on it or using making, like, a mint syrup. Um, but, alas, it, this is this is specifically a time for exploration. It's about learning new things and trying new things. And we happen to have both, so I will go down and grab both of them. My peppermint schnapps are around here somewhere. I just need to find... Oh, there's my creme de menthe. And the peppermint schnapps are right behind. There's my creme de menthe, and uh, there's my peppermint schnapps. I don't know if I've opened this. Oh, I have opened this container before. Another little tidbit about my life. Um, again, I used to live in a fraternity house, and one time they were preparing for a party that used a lot of peppermint schnapps, and they had some left over. So uh, this bottle is a stolen bottle from my fraternity. Don't tell anyone. Or do. I don't really care. Any press is good press. Woo! Let's do it! Do the peppermint! So I actually kind of want to see, because we have the, the means to do so. I, I want to see what... I want to really know what the difference between the peppermint schnapps in this case, and specifically the white creme de menthe. There is also a green creme, creme de menthe. And I'm pretty sure the recipe calls for a green creme de menthe to make it look like a shamrock, otherwise there wouldn't be too much color to it at all. Don't worry, we have a solution for that. Um, and I, at first I was like, I don't think they taste different. But I've done reading and continue to do research, and it seems that there is a difference between various different colored spirits of the same name. There is a difference between green chartreuse and yellow chartreuse. There is a difference between dark creme de caco and white creme de caco. I'm inclined to think that there is also a difference between white creme de menthe and green creme de menthe. What that difference is, I'm not exactly sure. And if Alexa can hear me, we will ask them. Alexa, what is the difference between white and green creme de menthe? And please don't just say the color. Tea.com. White teas come from the same plant, but white tea almost entirely consists of yogurt mixed in green tea and these leaves only dried naturally. Unlike Alexa, stop. Alexa thought that I was talking about teas. Not what I was talking about. We try. Sometimes we get an answer, and sometimes it's just funny that we don't. That's hilarious. Anyway, so I want to take a little bit of creme de menthe. I'll put it into a shot glass. I've run out of cordial glasses, or at least two that I'm willing to sacrifice. I don't have many of them. I picked them up at, like, a, a thrift store, I think, one time. They're just so cute. Oh, my gosh. I think creme, uh, creme de menthe as well. One smells like peppermint, obviously. And the other one, well, I don't really know what it, what it smells like right now. I think one is a little more... Let's see, the creme de menthe, I feel like, is a little more syrup than the other one. Hmm. They both look the same color. I think they have the same viscosity. I, I don't really know. The peppermint schnapps quite literally smells like a, like a peppermint candy. That's... I, I don't know what other way to describe that. It is very, very pepperminty. The creme de menthe, on the other hand, smells like spearmint. Yeah, it's literally the difference between spearmint and peppermint. Like, that don't... That's... That's literally the difference. Peppermint. Like a candy cane. Like a like a peppermint candy. Yep. Absolutely. Creme de menthe. Like like gum. It's like it's like spearmint gum. Yeah, I, I don't I, I thought that was gonna be harder. One tastes like peppermint. One tastes like spearmint. So. And together. <laughs> Like a winter mint. I don't really know how else to describe that. It's more it's more potently peppermint. I think the peppermint is a little more potent. It's a it's a thing. <laughs> I'll put those away. <laughs> I honestly thought that was going to be hard. 
You know what? My glasses have fallen off of me for the third time, so I just I just don't need it. It is kind of mouthwashy. I use that purple stuff. The purple Listerine. So I actually kind of like that. I think it's a little more... More like the creme de menthe than the peppermint, if I'm being completely honest. All right. I think... Being that creme de menthe is fundamentally a different flavor than the peppermint, I'm gonna go with the creme de menthe in this case because that's what the recipe calls for, so we shall. However, I would recommend Hershey syrup plus peppermint schnapps. Haircuts. Very, very, very tasty. So to make a shamrock, uh, let's see, what, is, what does it tell me to do? Do I just build it in a glass? I put it in a cocktail glass, I shake with ice, and then I strain it. And it measures in parts. So it says one and a half parts of Irish whiskey and a half a part of dry vermouth and a splash of creme de menthe. I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that the parts are supposed to translate to ounces. I don't think I really want a, an excess of, of, of spirits in my, in my shaker this time. So I'm gonna say it's one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of your Irish whiskey and half an ounce or 15 milliliters of your driver mood. Uh, and then splash uh, the other stuff. Um, I'm gonna use my not so happy cocktail shaker. I, I am still in the market for more cocktail shakers because I just like, I just like, I need more of them. I'm running out of, I'm running out of space at this bar, honestly. Boy. So, we need to shake it, we need to strain it. So I'm gonna go grab myself some ice cubes as we normally do. That Irish Old Fashioned still tastes amazing. I dropped one of, no, I dropped one of my pineapple fronds. I have those in my fridge now for when we make keep tiki drinks again. It's gonna be great. Grab myself a big cube, I'm gonna grab myself a little cube, as, as is normally done over here. I grab them both at once, so I only have to be behind the bar for just a little bit longer. There we go. Two little cubes. One big cube. One and a half ounces of your Irish whiskey. Let's go with the Irish whiskey choice tonight. It's still Jameson. It's always been Jameson. It will never be anything other than Jameson. My baby, I love this stuff. In any case, one and a half ounces, or about 44 milliliters of your Irish whiskey of choice. I know what mine choice is. There we go. Next, we're gonna need the half an ounce of the, I almost forgot what it was, dry vermouth, that's what it is. And that, I, I know I said that I take, took everything out of the fridge and put it in my cooler, I didn't. Forgot the, forgot the dry vermouth. I'm using Ellie Pratt, so I got I also have Martini Rossi in there, but I think I actually like Noli Pratt a little bit better. And this is a, a Vermouth de France, Noli Pratt, original dry, Vermouth. Show me your Vermouth. Half an ounce. I guess we don't really need that much of it in it. Also, like, the idea of adding dry vermouth was the thing that attracted me to this particular cocktail, because I, I feel like dry vermouth gets used less often. And this one combines whiskey dry vermouth, and creme de menthe. And that particular flavor combo was something that I wanted I wanted to be a part of. I, I wanted to be a part of that world. Kind of like the Little Mermaid did once, except significantly less alcoholic and a lot more Disney. So now that you've combined that together, you're also gonna add a splash of creme de menthe. I'm gonna do it without even looking. All right, I kind of looked a little bit. All right, I definitely got it in there. I cheated a little bit. It's okay. You don't tell, I won't tell. I actually think what I kind of want to do is I start making cocktails now. Just to provide more context, I'm going to start stacking the bottles in the corner over there. Because I want to be able to share. I want it to be more obvious of like what the heck is going on over here. So, so far we've got our driver Muth, Noily Pratt, our Creme de Menthe, Huron Walker, and Irish Whiskey. I, I don't know if the, if this helps like provide more context again like the whole the whole running a show thing a lot of questions a lot of a lot of things involved so uh any suggestions are always welcome you can just tell me directly provide feedback and pop a discord server you can do whatever you want to really whether you choose to speak or not i still appreciate your presence and thank you now in thanks i'm gonna shake a cocktail and i'm gonna sip one at the same time this is a very advanced technique so please don't think that you have to try this at home but you can if you want to Now we switch directions.
I realized that in that position, my arm is upstaging me. So it's not a, not very, not very considerate of myself, not from a stage standpoint. Check it out of the bar like those thirst trap clips on TikTok. I've shaken this way too much. Incredible. LOL. Dude, asking you sell receive. This is a very dangerous I'm a very dangerous person to be streaming. You just say what you want. It'll probably happen. I'm I'm very I'm very swayed by the desires of others. In any case, you need to put this into a glass. This the instructions call for a cocktail glass. What is a cocktail glass? I've been told that a cocktail glass is a martini glass, but it could also be a coupe glass. I, I don't really know what's considered the the martini glass, the the, coupe, the cocktail glass. So I'm gonna go for. It. I grabbed the martini glass. That's what we're gonna do. We use a martini glass and set up our cocktail angle. The power, of, the power of suggestion. You are getting sunglassier. Oh, like, oh no, my sunglasses are over there, man. That's a lot of effort at this point. I've got, like, technically I've got two cocktails in me, but, like, volume-wise, uh, probably not even half a cocktail. So, but you're asking so much of me, man. I don't, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can take the pressure anymore, dude. Dude! Man, broski, look at this glass. It's, it's here. Uh, I don't want to knock over my champagne flute. Do not knock over my champagne flute. Yeah, you know what? That's going to the other side of the bar. That's that's scary. I don't want to drop that. I don't want to rack things. There we go. Isn't it beautiful? Isn't isn't she beautiful? Look at those curves. Anyway, enough thirsting over cocktail glasses. We're gonna strain it over top. Um, that's it. There is there is no garnish. That, not not to my knowledge. Now, nothing tells me that this is supposed to be green. I can go back to the recipe, and actually, I am gonna go back to the recipe for a moment because I wanna see if it calls for green creme de menthe. Specifically calls for green creme de menthe. I don't have that because I got the white creme de menthe and I think that's good enough for me. However, when we ask ourselves how to make white creme de menthe green, we may settle upon the answer that you just add green to it. So. Lucky for the people who abide by that particular philosophy, I have green food dye. Look at, the, the, where, where's the camera? There it is, look, green food dye. It's actually green. It does look kind of yummy though. I'm a fan of that. Let us add, for a moment, imagine that Cameron used green creme de menthe. And now, oh my God, we made that dream a reality. Somebody get something to stir that with. I'm gonna use a knife. Wow, oh my god, it's like magic. It's so pretty. That actually looks kind of disgusting. I'm gonna add more. Ah, look, there it is. More green. Again, I could very well have just used green creme de menthe and go to the store and buy it, but I didn't because I'm lazy. I'm not lazy. I'm trying to remain frugal. I have creme de menthe already, and there really wasn't anything. Like, would I buy an entire bottle for one cocktail? Um, yes. I, to I totally would. For Amaro, uh, for the Amaro No Nina that I bought, um, I bought it because I wanted to try a paper plane. And I did. So uh, there we are. This is called the Shamrock. If you had to put a garnish on it, um, I would suggest a clover. There are no clovers around here. And if there are any clovers in Philadelphia, I would say it's, prob it's probably not safe to think that it's safe for human consumption or decor because a dog probably pissed all over it. And so with that... Um, I will, I will just pretend that there's a pretty green flower on it with four cloves, four leaves on it, because it's a, it's a lucky, it's a lucky beverage, my friends. You deserve the luck today. Shamrock cocktail. It was made with Irish whiskey in one and a half parts to a half a part of dry vermouth and a splash of creme de menthe. I don't know whether or not I splashed that correctly. It smells a little bit like creme de menthe. And I'm getting more of the vermouth on there, too. It kind of smells like the vermouth. A little bit of... Eh, it's, it's mostly the creme de menthe. It's not overpoweringly creme de menthe, but I can smell that nonetheless. And it's green! How does it look? It looks green, damn it! That's because I put green food dye in it. 
And how does it taste though? Hmm. Well, that's interesting. So it's got the dry vermouth in it, right? So it's it's mar it's martini like. The dry vermouth is prevalent. The creme de menthe is not super forward. There there must have been only a splash in there, evidently. I I I wouldn't know. I didn't look, obviously. But I can taste it a little bit, but only in so that it's a little effervescent. It there's a it's a little minty, almost almost kind of like there is a bit of fernet branca in there, which is very menthol-y. Although not as bitter, not clearly clearly not as bitter as a fernet branca. I can I can definitely taste everything that's going on in there. I can taste the Jameson, which I like. I think the first thing that I get is the kind of kind of acidicness of the dry vermouth. Then it very quickly goes to the Jameson. It's all the, it's all the characteristics from the Jameson. It's very kind of it's kind of bready to me at least. Um, and then it lends itself on the on the air as being vermouthy and creme de menthe. It's got a, the, the creme de menthe does actually add a pretty nice finish to that. I'm actually, I wouldn't say that I'm a huge fan of the drink, per se, but it's good. It's definitely, it's like, it's not as dry as I imagined it would be. All things considered, it is actually quite pleasant. I would say like, with this cocktail, as opposed to, let's say, sipping a whiskey, I am so much more likely to take a bigger gulp of it. And I actually just did because I wanted to see if it changed up the flavor a little bit. And it is different. There is actually a very, very nice interplay going on there between the dry vermouth and the creme de menthe. And honestly, it's pretty good. I kind of I kind of like that. That's not a flavor combo that I really would have considered is like forefront and I guess preferable. But it's really not... It's really not that bad. I feel like that combo of dry vermouth and creme de menthe, or let's say dry vermouth and mint, could probably go in a couple of different directions. And I feel like if you added more, if you added something more syrupy to it, I think that would be nice. I think it would even go well with like a, my brain is saying citrus. I almost want to add like a spritz of orange on top of it. I'm not going to. Not this time. Nothing about shamrock screams. Oh my God, spray it with orange oils. Or put some bitters on it. Um, so so I'm not going to. This is also just from like a random book. And um, I didn't do so much research into the, the, the shamrock cocktail itself. It might be a cocktail that has a bit more history behind it than just some little, just one of the 10,000 books, technically 9,999, because I found a double in there in this particular book. And I actually want to see if I can do a little impromptu research on the shamrock to see if there's any any history behind it. Shamrock cocktail, the best shamrock juice, shamrock. Difference Guide's pretty cool. Difference Guide provides, I, I will admit, there are, there are a couple different places that I like to go for information on the cocktails that I mix for myself and for the stream. And Difference Guide is a really, really nice place to go. It could very well be presenting wrong information or otherwise, um, but it can be kind of nice. So apparently, at least according to Difference Guide, the Shamrock cocktail, which in this in this case used Irish whiskey, dry vermouth, chartreuse, peppermint, creme de menthe, peppermint specifically, interesting, and chilled water, omit if using wet ice, comes from Harry Craddock's 1930 The Savoy Cocktail Book, and it contains 187 calories, apparently. So that's actually really interesting there. So we can think about that for a moment. There's a little more history that goes behind the Shamrock cocktail. This version of the Shamrock is evidently a bit of a change compared to what Diffords is saying is a cocktail from a book from the 1930s. It is omitting the green chartreuse in this case. It is also uh, omitting any um, the, the, the peppermint component to it. I think if I would have... You know what? We're gonna do. We're gonna do another one. We're we're gonna do another one because this one clearly. Say, I, I don't have any chartreuse on me. I wish I did, but I don't have any chartreuse. Chartreuse is apparently in low supply right now. Those two monks out there who know the secret are being a little. They're being frugal with their recipe. Um, but if this this calls for peppermint creme de menthe, which I didn't think was a thing, 
but creme de menthe was only spearminty. But apparently this is just Haram Walker's version of it. So I'm gonna, this is a very simple drink. I'm gonna mix it again, and I'm gonna use peppermint this time because it's closer to what the original called for. What I'm calling the original based off of a single source. This is not a very scientific way of going through and taking sources and stuff, but I'm actually very, very curious. And Jeff is saying Prohibition era drink. When was Pro Alexa, when was Prohibition? Educate me. Alexa, when was Prohibition? Ooh, 1920 to 33 it looks like. Is that 33 or 43? I don't remember. I'm just kind of emptying out my shaker. I'm going to grab my ice and stuff again. That's a good thing. That's probably some good content. Actually, I want... Alexa, when was Prohibition? I'm going to listen this time. Alexa, when was Prohibition? Oh my god, Alexa, when was Prohibition? Why aren't you listening to me? I'm gonna Google it. Google's apparently superior in this case, but wait, I'm grabbing ice in the process. One more time, Alexa, when was Prohibition in the United States? <sighs> I don't like it when the machine don't listen. When was it? The 1920s, thank you. Alexa is taking a smoke break. I want to say very naughty things to Alexa right now. Prohibition America. 1920s to... 1933. It was 33. Flapper dresses and speakeasy. LMAO! Anyway, I'm going to mix this whole cocktail again with the Irish whiskey. One and a half parts to a half a part of the... Oh my god, what was it? Think. It's literally on the bar. Dry vermouth. I remember. Oh my god, this makes it so much easier to remember what was in the damn cocktail. Good on you, Cameron. Good on you. All right, we're going to add the ounce and a half, or about 44 milliliters of the Irish whiskey, and then we're going to go to the other side again. Thank you, I guess. How are you this fine, wonderful evening? I love how that thing... Alexa, are you even listening to me? I'm designed to protect your privacy. I record audio only oh shut up! You don't know me! You don't care about me! You're just a machine! You don't care about me or my cocktails! You're just pretending! Alexa, stop talking! I can't believe you're still talking! Why are you still talking? I need a splash of peppermint schnapps. Or it said peppermint creme de menthe. I don't have peppermint creme de menthe. So I'm just going to go back for the peppermint schnapps because that's the closest thing to peppermint that I have. And I'm very curious about it. And just like before, I'm going to pretend that I know what a splash looks like. Just, it's a splash. I, I guzzled it in there. It's, it's fine. It's probably going to be okay. And then we're going to shake it. Oh, wait. We used this in our cocktail. I'll put it right there. And I don't have another martini glass that looks like this. So I'm going to opt for literally any other glass that I have. And while I search for that glass, I'm going to shake below the bar because the thirsty TikTokers are into it. I also have to go down here for my glasses, I promise. Oh my goodness, Rich No, welcome to the party. Welcome to the bar. We're mixing up some shamrocks. If you're into cocktails, you can go to the right place. Thank you for popping in. All right, we've shaken it. So, just like we did the last time, I do not have green creme de menthe, nor apparently do I have green peppermint schnapps, uh, or green peppermint creme de menthe. So, what I'm going to opt for is the approach of... Oh, let me... I'm going to strain it into my glass, and I'm just going to add some food color. Actually, what if I add the food coloring first? Because I don't have the green, green creme de menthe, or apparently green peppermint thing. It's, it's a shamrock. It, like the shamrock shake, it's got to be green. I don't think there's anything actually green in a shamrock shake, if I'm being completely honest there. How many drops? I, I don't know. Enough. There we go. That's probably enough. Let's see if that worked. Oh my goodness. Oh my god. There's a lot of funny things in there. Look at that. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. I'm gonna add a couple more in there. And just like before, I'm gonna use a knife to mix things up because we're classy, you know? It's just what a... It reminds me of other things that involve knives, like knife fighting. And I'm also making a bit of a mess, but it's fine. Now, now, to the people who are particular out there, you may think to yourself, well, didn't he use the knife on the sp clearly spearmint version of the cocktail? And you're right, I did. And to that I answer, dude, whatever, man. 
whatever, whatever, man. It's like, I wasn't even intending on doing this twice anyway. But for the people, or to satisfy my own morbid sense of curiosity, I will absolutely do it again. So, this is the Shamrock version 2. I apparently shook the hell out of this one a little bit more because there's a couple of ice, uh, ice little shards in there, so I probably could have double strained it. I put green food dye in the cocktail. I, I think we're far enough as it is. So comparatively, according to Difference Guide, the Shamrock cocktail originally called for the Irish whiskey. It called for the dry vermouth. It called for peppermint, creme de menthe, and it also called for chartreuse and also some chilled water. I don't have any chartreuse, so I can't do the original, although I really would like to do so. I literally cannot right now. I don't know what a good substance for sub in for chartreuse would be. And if there is one, I certainly don't have it today. But I do want to see the difference between the more spearminty creme de menthe version of the cocktail, according to a different book, and the more spearmint, or I'm sorry, peppermint version of the cocktail. So the one originally was actually really, really pleasant. The dry vermouth and the creme de menthe go intensely well. I actually really love the way that those two flavors interplay with each other, and it sat for a little bit longer, so I wonder if it's changed a little bit. Yeah, it's it's totally like evened itself out. That actually blends really, really well together. Irish whiskey, creme de menthe, and dry vermouth go really well. It's actually, it's 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 less minty now and a lot more vermouthy, but it's kind of like a martini, except instead of using your gin or your vodka, you're using the whiskey in it, and you've still got the dry vermouth there. It's actually, it's, it's nice. I really enjoy that. Also, I need to take a moment to drink some water because I realize I haven't taken any sips of water, and when you're drinking like this, you should drink water. Moderation. Back to your regularly scheduled cocktail stream. This one's got peppermint in it. Not peppermint creme de menthe. I don't have access to that. Didn't realize that that was a thing. But I got peppermint schnapps. And they were notably different from each other. It smells pepperminty, but it also smells like the whiskey. Which to me was a little bready almost flapjacky and that smells great together wow okay that is that's definitely different oh that's really different oh yeah i just took a little bit of a one of the ways that i try to taste cocktails was inspired to me by a wine class that i took while i was still at university a while ago and it was when you taste it you can kind of taste it on your tongue for a little bit. You can breathe in, you can breathe out, you can do a little type thing. It's a little pretentious, but it's also really, there's a lot of pretentiousness with wine tasting and cocktail tasting and beer tasting and blah, 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 tasting and tasting of literally anything. But I find that it kind of does help me. And now my tongue flip, there was something that was so violently dry vermouth there. I don't know how else to describe it. This is a lot more forward on the dry vermouth flavor and a lot less pulled back on the mintiness. I think the spearmint tastes a lot more sweet than the peppermint does. So it doesn't balance out the same way, in my opinion, that the creme de menthe does, that is a more spearminty flavor, more so than the more pepperminty flavor of, obviously, the peppermint schnapps. It still does taste good, though. I would say, like, for the most part, there are, they're, they're not too different from each other, but I feel like things are more balanced with spearminty creme de menthe, more so than the pepperminty peppermint schnapps, or let's say a peppermint creme de menthe. Granted, I'm sure Gifford peppermint creme de menthe probably tastes both different than both of the ones that I have here. And at one point, when I get the chartreuse, I should definitely try the original. So I should add that to my cocktail collection. A violent drink? Yeah, like the flavor of the dry vermouth feels so, it feels so violent. It just feels so, like, like, the first thing that I get from this version is it's peppermint and it's whiskey. It's the whiskey, but it's effervescent. It's whiskey, but it's cool. And then, like, the driver Ruth is just like, hey, did you forget about me? And I'm feeling like, no, I don't think I did. It's clearly sitting here on the bar. I didn't forget about it, but that's kind of that's kind of what I'm getting from it. It's, I feel like it's a very it's a more violent combination. But hey, if your preference are flavors that are a little more in your face, if you wanted a lot more minty, you could probably opt for the peppermint as opposed to the creme de menthe spearmint D one. And that's specifically a Haram Walker. Haram Walker is the one that tastes very spearmint to me. I don't know if creme de menthe is specifically spearmint or other types of mint like a chocolate mint or otherwise. 
I don't know. That is beyond the scope of this particular cocktail libation stream. And so, that was good. I like that. All things considered, the idea of mint and Irish whiskey together was not something that I was expecting, and it actually tastes kind of good. So to do a quick wrap up of where we've been so far, we've had three drinks so far. One was simple. I put it over here because I didn't want to make a mess of it with my boom arm. And it is equal parts champagne and Guinness or Irish stout. I used Prosecco. It probably was a mistake, but it tastes all right. I like mine a little more Guinness heavy. And as it sat for a while, it tastes way too much like oxidized Prosecco, and I now hate that drink. Not a fan of it. Probably more of a, once you pour it, you down it, and then you don't look back. We also made an Irish Old Fashioned. Irish Old Fashioned is essentially another Old Fashioned, but using a different Old, uh, old Fashioned technique, we used, there was a sh there's sugar cubes in here, there's a muddled orange peel in here, there's simple syrup in here as well, there's Irish whiskey in here, there's also some orange bitters in there, and also a peel, an orange peel that has been expressed and rubbed around the edge and dropped on the inside and it's been stirred. It's an Old Fashioned, but it's got Irish whiskey in it, and adds all the different sweet components that an Old Fashioned could add, like a sugar cube, and syrup and the and a really nicely non-pithed orange peel at the bottom of the glass muddled together to create like almost an oleosaccharum type thing semantics i know it's delicious oh my god and it still is i am so into that i still love that we've also covered the shamrock cocktail which according to one drink according to one book is made by using irish whiskey and dry vermouth and green creme de menthe or white creme de menthe with food dye. I know it's different, but this is what we had. It can also be made as to the original 1930 version by combining Irish whiskey and green chartreuse and peppermint creme de menthe, chilled water and dry vermouth together, not necessarily in that order or in those proportions. I don't have green chartreuse, so I did not go that route. But I did want to try and see how the peppermint would taste. So instead of the creme de menthe, the white creme de menthe, which tastes more spearmint, we added the peppermint schnapps, which are obviously a little more pepperminty. And if I had to pick a favorite, I'd probably go with the spearmint. It just tastes a little bit more balanced. But I like that. And that was good so far. In any case, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a hydration break for a moment. Collect my thoughts and take a moment to see how everyone's doing. How are we all doing out there? Again, it is. It's this is this is this is a bar. The idea is to make it a little more community focused. And although I like to think that this is a lot like a cocktail show, and that we're putting on a show, and that everyone should stay silent during the show, say nothing. I really do value the input of others. And if you feel like perhaps like this isn't the time to say anything because of what's going on, like you don't necessarily like talk during a movie or you don't talk during a concert, concert and stuff. I just want to give a quick reminder that like you are welcome to say something if you want to. You are welcome to correct me if there is something that needs corrected. You are welcome to offer your own side of a cocktail because cocktails have so many different ways and chances are I probably never heard of it and the thing that I want to get most out of this stream to be completely honest is to be able to learn all the different ways that exist out there to become a better home bartender I don't actually work in a bar I do this as a really really passionate hobby of mine and I really really enjoy it not just cocktails for myself but cocktails for the people around me and if there's anything that I can learn as well as to be able to teach other people as well through my own learnings and failures and successes and otherwise then I think that's really really important to me and just kind of wanted to say that I'm a couple drinks in, so maybe I'm getting a little fluffy, but uh, there's more cocktails to get. So we will continue from here. Stay hydrated, stay safe, stay beautiful. Next cocktail of the evening. It's not gonna be the Shamrock. I'm not gonna finish those ones off. I like, I want my Irish Old Fashioned. My Irish Old Fashioned is nice. But I'm gonna grab some coasters. These guys, I have many coasters. And I think I can get a coaster for each of them. Just, to, just just for the purposes of displaying. They're really, I thought this was a bigger bar. It's really not. I'm gonna take those to the side. I'll put my vermouth away. Put my stupid little shaker away. We'll put things back where they belong. Rule number one of bartending, according to at least one individual who goes by Rye, would say to clean as you go. I'm gonna put the peppermint schnapps in the back because I don't really use those as often, both in my personal time and in my stream side. In my stream time. We'll put these on a couple of coasters, we'll put them off to the side, and proudly display the various libations that we have concocted this evening. Just like over there. Please don't break your glasses, Cameron. That would be catastrophic. Absolutely catastrophic. I see, I see Jeff in here saying, I enjoy your show, Cameron. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. 
Going back to cocktails, though, we can only be we can only be a, like we can only be suck ups to the audience. Only only a small percentage out of every single stream. So we're gonna push the ego aside a little bit. Get ourselves together. Move on with the show elsewhere. So again, on the topic of St. Patrick's Day drinks, I imagine that if you were going to go on a bar crawl and you were gonna walk into an establishment and say like, I want a drink, it's St. Patrick's Day, it's Air and Express, I want to really indulge in my Irish roots, what would you order at the bar? You'd walk in and you were with your fraternity brothers and sister sororities and otherwise, and you're like, I'm gonna get fucking blasted. What would you order? And I know when I was in my fraternity college days, the thing that we would order is what is some would call previously an Irish car bomb, or as I think is more a little political correct now an irish shot which is the cocktail that we're gonna cocktail we're gonna cover it next and it's gonna be it's gonna be great and i'm absolutely gonna do what the what the kiddos do and drink the whole thing because i had a very i had a i know my body relatively well i had a very large dinner this evening i've been drinking more or less a lot of water actually to prepare let's prepare myself I plan on the thing that comes next is a bomb type drink. It takes a shot of something and drops it into another alcoholic or non alcoholic like container there. In this case, it's going to be a pint of Guinness. I plan on drinking the whole thing. I plan on doing it the style that I would reminiscently do. And as such, if I'm going to do that in that manner, I want to make sure I prepare my body for it. That means carbs. There was a lot of carbs in tonight's dinner. It was, it was a lot of rice. A lot of rice and some turkey filet mignon, some bacon as well, and a salad. It was good stuff. And a lot of water as well. I plan on finishing the, this goblet here before I proceed to the next start because I care about my body. Apparently not enough to not drink alcohol, but I do care about it, at least not to be hungover in the morning when I work. I don't know if... Excuse me. I don't know if... Um, Chugging a bunch of water is really healthy to the system. I'm not a library. I'm not a librarian. I am not a doctor or a biologist. Kind of like a boiler maker. Yeah, kind of like a boiler maker. So I think a boiler maker is very similar to at least here in Philadelphia. Have we called what we have? What's called a citywide, and a citywide is taking a shot of the cheapest whiskey, usually like a Bankers Club or something, and dropping it into the cheapest beer, usually like a Genesee. I think a boiler maker is essentially the equivalent of a Philadelphia citywide. It's just a shot of whiskey or spirit dropped into a beer. I believe that's what a Boilermaker is. I have i don't think I've specifically ordered a Boilermaker before because I'm in Philadelphia and you I think you call it a citywide around here. But cor correct me if I'm wrong there. So the next thing that we're gonna do is evidently called the Irish shot. Irish car bomb, at least colloquially, seems to be a rather offensive term to the Irish, at least from what I can tell. I've never asked an Irish person, but I would just like to take the word of the internet. It doesn't sound very nice, so I will go with that. This is from a website called liquor.com. You've probably heard of it, and it says that the Irish shot, an invention in 1979, quickly took off in Irish pubs and other bars around the United States. It was first created by a person that goes by Charles Burke Cronin Oat, the former owner of Wilson's Saloon in Norwich, Connecticut. If you want the full article, you can go to the website and read it yourself. But essentially, the idea is you take the alcoholic parts of it, the Irish whiskey in this case, the Bailey's Irish cream, both Irish things, and drop it into something else that is also Irish in a bomb-like fashion, which I will go through and explain what exactly what that means. The idea of what I call these bomb li I guess other people would probably call them bomb libations. I don't know if I'm the one who called them that, but I like to call them that, is that you take something and you put it into something else, and then you either quickly or at your own pace, whatever makes you feel most comfortable, you down that thing at some point. In particular, you can get, uh, in particular, the bombs that I know of in my life are the Jaeger bomb. You take Jaeger and drop it into a Red Bull. Spicy. You could take the, in this case, the Irish shot or the uh, colloquially, or I guess uncolloquially, I I've said it already a bunch of times, the Irish shot where you take the Irish cream and the Irish whiskey and drop it into a Guinness. You can also, there's so many different types of bombs. There's a sake bomb as well, where you take sake, like a, a like a shot glass full of sake, and you drop it into um, a Japanese whiskey, like a, like a, I think Suntory, I know Suntory does whiskey. I don't remember what what's a prominent, um, Ichi, I think Ichiban? Ichiban, I think, is a prominent Japanese beer that I think you can get at local, um, local pubs around here, at least in Philadelphia. And that's the idea of it. You can drink it at your own pace, but the thing with the Irish, the, um, the Irish shot in this case is that there's Irish cream in there. And their Irish cr cream is a funny, funny little thing. Cream, in general, will, I forgot to write this on my board, I'm gonna do that as I explain, has a milky component to it. 
So what will happen is the milky parts, the milky proteins, the creamy parts are going to potentially curdle in an acidic environment. I think beers in general are a little more acidic. Some liqueurs and stuff are also very acidic. I don't know what the acidity level of an Irish whiskey is, but I am relatively certain that the acidity level of a beer is higher than that of like a neutral pH. So what happens or what could happen is when you drop this proteinaic milky substance that has cream and stuff in it into the acidic solution, like a lemon juice, for example, it will curdle and it'll curdle relatively quickly depending on the acidity of the solution. Another example where you see this are on clarified milk punches, where essentially you take actual milk, like actual milk from a cow, put it into something that is acidic, like a lemon juice or something, and then you let that curdle, and then you strain out all of the curdle bits, and what you're left behind with is a clarified milk punch. All of the like opaque proteins and stuff that amassed into the curdle have been removed, and what you're left behind with is something that has the silkiness of cream and milk, but none of the curdle which is how you make clarified milk punches. Uh, I, I'm not making that this evening, but it's, it's a really cool thing. I want to do more with clarification because it sounds really, really cool. And like chemi chemically speaking, that's a pretty awesome thing. And I accidentally curdled something one time. Um, I was thinking it was doing a mind eraser stream where I think it was lime juice and coffee cream liqueur. It was a Kahlua or something. And it was interesting. And then we decided to strain it. And it was actually pretty good, all things considered. So we are going to move on to the Irish shot in this case. The Irish shot in this case. Essentially, what you do, it's very, very complicated. So please listen carefully. You fill up a pint glass with Guinness. That will be our first step. Grab yourself a Guinness glass, if you have one, or a pint glass. I actually, this is not as weird as it sounds. I found a Guinness glass on the side of the road. Somebody must have gotten it from a local bar and left it. And I picked it up because I was like, I need this glass in my life. It wasn't tarnished. It didn't look like anybody peed in it or anything. I've cleaned it multiple times and sanitized it thoroughly. Um, so I'm going to fill it up. I don't like milk, says Jeff. So that sounds hideous. So I wonder, I would only ask, what part of the milk don't you like? Because my, my fiance Anna does not like milk either. I don't know exactly what part of the milk gets left behind in the clarified milk punches and stuff. I don't know if it even tastes like milk still. Um, it might be worth the exploration if you have an open mind. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to. Some things are just beyond people's comfort zone. And if you're potentially lactose intolerant, nobody needs to push themselves that far. So take a pint glass or a Guinness glass or whatever, crack open another Guinness. Just like you do over here. Listen to the sizzle. It's bubbling a little bit because it's nitrogenated and it's great. And you pour that in there. Some people say that there is a proper way to pour Guinness. I don't really know what the proper way is. I've been told that you can either just gun it from the top and let all the air bubbles seep out. Some have been told, at least in a beer class that I took, that you put it at a 45 degree angle. You pour until you get to the top. You put it back up and then you finish off the rest. I don't really know. It doesn't really matter. Guinness is a cool thing to look at. So check it out. Kind of, kind of cool. I don't know if you can see in this particular light, but there is a like a falling effect happening here. I'm going to pull this up a little bit because I think my camera itself is blocking it. I'm not sure if you can see the kind of falling effect that's happening in there. Oh yeah, you most definitely can. It's so cool looking. I love the way that beers like this fall. It's like you're almost watching like a little like waterfall happening there. It's really, really cool looking. That's just the, it's just the, it's just the concept of these drinks. There. It's really cool. I've seen a bartender, says Jeff. Pull the spout and let the Guinness pour like a soda fountain. Yeah, I think there are just many ways to play. Some people have conver like there's in competitions out there of people pouring Guinness into pint glasses to see like who gets the best head or otherwise. I don't really know. Um, I am not a connoisseur of such activities. And, uh, this one is done. So I'll put that in my glass. This is, this is a full beer in here, absolutely. The next thing that you're going to need is a shot glass. I actually used the two shot glasses that I had, so I have to go around the front of the bar to get myself another one. So please excuse me for the hottest of moments as I go around the front. I realize that the bar doesn't really have that much ice, all things considered, so I'm gonna grab myself another uh, shot glass. There are larger shot glasses in here. There are many different types of shot glasses. Ah! This suffices. Here's my shot glass. And what we are going to do is we are going to layer the Irish cream on top of the Irish whiskey. And so this feels like it's important. So I'm going to bring the little thing over and we're gonna see if I can do that. Again, the reagents that I will be using, uh, one of them is a Bailey's Irish cream. I've never actually had Bailey's Irish cream in my collection. I've always ever had other Irish creams. Don't know why I never came around to getting the Baileys. 
uh, but Bailey's is the one to use. And it was actually on sale, so I grabbed that. Everyone loves cream, says Bailey's. They said, and we love spirits and whiskey, but in the same bottle? Are you sure? We just smiled. Bailey's, the original Irish cream, which evidently, according to the bottle on the back, is mixed with Irish whiskey. Evidently. It's an Irish whiskey based cream liqueur. A lot of liqueurs and stuff out there are based on using another spirit. You have, I have this one pomegranate and it's spirit in my collection that is based on tequila. And I think that's really cool. We have other spirits in my collection that are based on other things. I think I have some falernum that I made myself that is rum based. It's a whole, it's a whole world out there. It's great. Here's some ASMR satisfaction for a fresh bottle of Bailey's. That is delightful. Now to be fair, I haven't had Baileys in a hot minute, so I'm actually going to take a little bit of the Baileys and I'm going to put it in the glass and I kind of want to see how it smells and tastes because it's been a while since my last Baileys. It is creamy. It is a wonderful smell. It is just like, it's, it's good. It does smell a little bit whiskey-y, but almost kind of, it's, it's kind of like a, like chocolate milk without the chocolate. And it's warm and it's got a bit of a spice to it. It's almost, it's like if cinnamon spice, like if vanilla had the spice of cinnamon, that's what I would describe Bailey's Irish cream to taste like. It is delightful. I love, I love cream liqueurs. They have a special place in my heart. But, but in any case, in any case, in any case, I need my Irish whiskey as well, which goes on the bottom and the cream goes on top. There is science happening here. You're not wrong when you say science. I assure you of that. Let's see if I can get this proper angle here. Get this close to the bottom. Bring this a little bit closer. I do all my own photography. Can you tell? There we go. That's a shot. It looks a little dirty because I literally just drank Irish cream from it. So just like, I don't know, bear with me. It'll be all right. Got my little Irish, my Guinness back here. You can't see the, you, you, you can't see, you can't see the logo up here. It's beautiful, but uh, that's okay. And I think it's the cream that goes on top. So we're going to try that. So essentially we're going to pour half a shot glass full of Irish whiskey. It's going to look a little, actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to clean this out a little bit because this looks actually kind of, I'm going to get a fresh, I'm going to get a fresh shot glass. It just doesn't, it just doesn't feel the same. I made a boo-boo there, but that's okay. I want it to look clean and pristine, so I'm going to grab another shot glass to make things clean and pristine. It's all about quality. I have so many shot glasses, like it does not even matter. I bought an entire um, uh, chess set with cocktail glasses, so it's great. Their perfectionism, dude, I hold myself to a very high standard at this bar, don't you know, don't you know? Put my Irish cream back thing back there and next what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take my bar spoon and I'm going to prepare myself to layer the Irish cream on top of it if I am careful enough with this then I should be able to get a really cool layering effect that it forms and although the photo implied that the cream would float it actually went up on top which is interesting i guess that's the thing like i i like to you know see i like i don't know man perfectionism is something i try to abide by and the picture said it made it look like the irish the the irish whiskey was on the bottom i i swear i swear that's what the picture looked like no, the Irish whiskey is definitely on top. I don't know what I was talking about. It's okay. We did it. Jeff says, why didn't you stir the green food dye with that instead of the knife? Hmm. Very good question. Very good question indeed. But so in any case, we have... You can still see that there is a layer of Irish whiskey up on top and the cream on the bottom. I admit the lighting here is not that good. It's currently blocked by the camera that lies in front of it, but alas, observe. The next thing that we're going to do is quite simply, if I can get this angle all up and nice, is we're gonna take this glass and drop it into this one here. That's, that's really all there is to it. And then you are going to drink it and that's your Irish shot. But you can order at, eh, you can really order it anywhere. I mean, nobody's going to look at you funny if you take a little bit of Bailey's, a little bit of Jameson, put it into a shot glass, and pop it into a stout. Nobody's going to look at you weirdly. And, um, 
we're gonna see how that goes so in honor of saint patrick's day Aaron express everything else coming up and just in general irish heritage in general it's as vastly complex and wonderful as many other cultures in this world probably not that i would know i'm predominantly italian and german <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know if there's like a Irish saying for drink, but alas, this is how it is. Take your glass, which is take your shot glass, which is half Irish whiskey and half half Irish cream, and drop it into your Irish stout and drink. I'm about halfway through this thing so far. It's it's nice. It is actually a very, very pleasant bomb to imbibe. As I was going through it, I was getting a lot of the Jam I was getting a lot of the Guinness first. It's chocolatey, it's a little bit coffee-y, it's a little metallic-y to be perfectly honest, but it's smooth because it's nitrogenated, this particular Guinness. Next, I started getting the vanilla notes, like the spicy vanilla, like the spice, spice like cinnamon vanilla. As I went farther down, the Jameson itself is like i guess it's kind of balancing things out because i'm not getting too much of it but i'm guessing there's some notes of like maybe some vanilla and stuff in there because it's got a nice it's a brown color it was probably aged in the barrel or whatever we're halfway through it so we continue with the rest of it because this is what it's all about and honestly this is really really good so i am more than happy to continue through this actually that's a lot of it and i feel like i've reached my limit so no need to force yourself. It's getting very curly now. It is actually really tasty. I, I will agree with Jeff. It must be very tasty. You only sip on the other drinks. I usually only sip on the other drinks. I don't like to go full ham on those drinks and stuff. And honestly, it's not... All things considered, if you think about it, so the Guinness is... Let's think about the amount of alcohol in there. There is... I'll grab another bottle. I grabbed a whole pack of these things. They're good. For... 14.9 fluid ounces, you have... Where is the percentage of alcohol on the bottle? I legit don't see it. What is the alcohol content in Guinness? Oh, yeah, I genuinely don't... I don't see an alcohol content in this can. Wait, is it on the... Hmm, is it on the box? I have the whole box! What what is the alcohol content of this thing? I genuinely don't know what the alcohol content of Guinness is. Hello. What the It must be on here somewhere. I can't find it. Wait, I'm not stupid. I I can't find it. Wow. I am Genuinely confused. Alexa, how much alcohol does Guinness have in it? The alcohol by volume of Guinness is 4.3%. Was that helpful? It was very helpful. Thank you. 4.3 apparently. I don't know that. You literally asked me if it was helpful. It's okay. So apparently it's 4.3. I can't find it on the can anywhere. 4.2 says Google. This is so interesting. I don't know what the... That's eh, okay. I don't need to look that deep into it. It's good. It's tasty. Uh, all things. This is a cocktail show. What are we talking about? We were talking about the Irish shot, aka the Irish car bomb. Although I like to refer to it as the Irish shot. Although I guess nobody would probably know what I'm talk talking about. You take a shot of half Irish whiskey and half Irish cream, and you drop it into an Irish stout, like a Guinness. In this case, it's half Jameson, half Bailey's in a shot glass, and into a full thing of guinness now to be fair the reason why, i i'm not gonna wind it i don't want to go into this whole defending myself thing as if i have masculinity that i need to defend but this is more than just a regular beer thing so going all ham on this one is um is a bit much for me i will say now that we've gotten through it we can actually kind of see what's happening i was mentioning that there'd be some curdling that goes on here and there is there is some curling happening here. There is a lot of stuff in here. The the foam has become more solid. The There are particulates happening here. It's honestly a little disgusting. And I would agree on this fact that it is disgusting, except for the fact that it tastes really, really good. Like, I love the way... If I had to pick a favorite liquor bomb to take, 
I take this one. I enjoy a Jaeger bomb because I like the flavor of Jaeger, and I also enjoy. I, I'm not a big Red Bull drinker, but I like the flavor of the licorice sweetness of a Jaeger as well as the Red Bull that it goes within. And that wouldn't be the first Jaeger bomb I've had. Uh, I've had many occasions where I go out and about and uh, I get a Jaeger bomb. It's a thing. It's a nice way to start the night or end the night or dangerously continue the night. I, you know, everyone's got their everyone's got their vices. I will put my Irish whiskey away. And I will also put my Baileys away. That was your Irish shot. It was pretty good. Yeah, seriously, all considered, considered. Love the way that that tastes. It's great. Good night. Oh, good night. Oh my God. Whoa. Okay. You said you want good night kisses. Goodbye. <laughs> I requested my. I request. <laughs> I requested of my dears that when she goes to bed at night that I, I'd like a. I'd like a kiss. Like I like a kiss on the lips. I feel very, very embarrassed and very vulnerable right now, but thank you everybody for watching that. That was, ooh. I'm also a little, a little buzzed right now. That was, oh, that was so cute. Anna, Jeff says hi. Hi, Jeff. She said hi in case you couldn't hear that. Oh, that was so cute. Oh, that means a lot to me. I love you. Anyways, we move on with the rest of the cocktail stream. Obviously, I will take the remainder of the Irish shot and I will put it off to the side. We have coasters for a reason. I'll put it there. I realize with the boom arm, I pretty much don't have full access to this side of the bar because then I can't can't swing my other cocktail angle over without potentially making a terrible, terrible, terrible mess. And that would be unfortunate. So let's see. We've covered four different things so far. We're about at the almost two-ish hour mark, all things considered. Um, there's more cocktails to cover. I would like to drink a bit more water because there was a, relatively speaking, higher amount of alcohol that I just consumed there in a very small amount of time. We can go into the physics of... Uh, physics? I don't know. Chemistry? Biology? I don't know. The more alcohol that you drink in a small period of time, the faster, you know, the worse the, the worse the body get drunk, you get hungover and stuff. And I look forward to not being hungover in the morning, so I'm gonna drink a lot of water. I think they say, I want to say, in terms of safe alcohol consumption, if you can consume about a cup of water per every drink that you have, and that is either a shot full of hard liquor that is a beer full of beer somewhere around like i think four to six percent or a wine glass full or maybe half a wine glass of wine which can be anywhere between like 10 to like 15 percent and liquor being around like the 42 a bunch of different percent i think 40 percent is like the the bar there that you measure by just just do things safely if i have a little hangover in the morning that's just that's just how it is in any case we move on the next cocktail of the evening let's see what else do we have here hmm we did the shamrock so far we did the black velvet so far we have done the irish shot in an irish old fashion i think i only have a couple of cocktails left we'll see how long they take me all things considered one of the ones that i want to cover is the irish coffee I want to cover an Irish coffee. An Irish coffee, another very prominent Irish or drink that contains the term Irish in it uh, that exists out there. Essentially, an Irish coffee is a coffee. It's got Irish whiskey in it, and you move on from there. I got to change up my board. I'm getting better. I'm actually getting better at this. I am remembering that I actually have a current recipe thing. That's impressive. That's really, really impressive. I actually worried for a moment that I didn't switch it out, and I'm actually very glad to see that I did for the Irish shot. The cocktail! At the end of the cocktail rainbow! That's what it's all about! We're doing an Irish coffee! I definitely didn't need to erase the word Irish. I wrote Irish on this board many times now. Irish coffee! Can you actually see this behind the water decanter? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm not particularly worried about that right now. That's a job for future Cameron to figure out. Essentially, your Irish coffee combines a couple of things together. It's coffee, naturally. You take Irish whiskey, naturally. Some sort of sweetening agent, because I think we kind of, I guess they assume that the coffee must be sweetened a little bit, kind of like a Starbucks latte. And you combine that together and you garnish it in a particular way with whipped cream in this case. There are many ways to Irish coffee. The recipe that I'm particular that I'm going for uses, like I said, a little bit of whipped cream on top. You've got some simple syrup in there. You've got Irish whiskey, and of course, you have coffee in there. I you could have an Irish coffee hot. 
you could freshly brew the coffee. And to be fair, I did seriously consider taking some coffee, doing a little bit of pour over action here, but that's just another area that I don't think I'm very, very good at. I don't think I'm very good at making pour over coffee. I like the way that it tastes. I think I'm okay with it. I could do a French press, but it would mostly be a little bit of me like sitting there watching the coffee being made, or I could get the Keurig. I didn't really want to do that. So I kind of went to the store today and I picked up some cold brew. I tried to make some cold brew last night um, using some coffee grounds that I had made, used for some pour over already, but it, it was actually very interesting. To make my cold brew, essentially what I do is uh, I take like, I don't really know what the measurements are, but I take coffee grounds and I put some purified water into it, purified um, filtered water, and I let it sit overnight in my fridge. And I did that, but I used co used coffee grounds this time, and often and like I didn't get a lot of, I didn't get something that tasted a lot like coffee. It kind of tasted like watered down coffee. And it didn't have a very bold of color. And I was actually kind of shocked because I'd never tried that before, and I just wanted to try it, and it didn't work out. So I went to the store today and I picked up some La Colombe cold brew coffee. I like the way that La Colombe coffee tastes. There's actually you can there's a little bit of uh, coffee grounds at the bottom of there, so it's real coffee, and I like the way it tastes. And there's at least been five or six bottles of this that have passed through my particular, you know, abode, because I like the way that it tastes. I think it's a little, it's almost a little caramelly. I actually, I haven't opened this bottle yet, so here's a little, okay, that didn't work the way that I wanted it to. Okay. I don't know what that. I don't know if that's a very pleasing sound. Eh, well, you know what? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come on, dude. Get out of there. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's cold brew coffee that I bought from Giant today. There we go. And it smells like nice and I like the way it tastes. It's a little vanilla, -y, a little caramelly. I actually like the way I like that is. I like that. <laughs> like that is. Does it say anything about the coffee itself? Because no, various coffees come from various different parts of the world. Cold pressed coffee. Cold pressed. Pressed is in italics, I think. Water at 100% Arabica. It's 100% Arabica from the Arabica region, which I guess is maybe Saudi Arabia? or some other Arabic area. I actually don't know too much about coffee, so please don't quote me on that. And that's the coffee that we're going to be using for this, this cocktail. I think the way to build an Irish coffee is I think you stack it on top of each other. I've seen some pretty cool, impressive, like, bartending flair videos about how to make your Irish coffees. There was this one video of a guy that I see out there. I don't know what his name is, uh, another creator. I think he works at a bar, I guess, who, like, made, like, seven or eight different Irish coffees all at the same time. He, like, stacked the glasses together and he poured them and it was really cool looking. Uh, I don't have enough glasses for that. I don't have enough self-confidence for that. And I just don't think that that's necessary. But what we're going to need is we're going to add everything into a tall, thin glass stir to combine. I have a, there's a particular glass shape that I want. And it's got a rimmed bottom. It's got a ribbed tiny stem, and then it's got a fluted top that has a handle on it. I don't have a glass like that. The only thing that I have close to something that has a handle on it is my toddy glass. So I'm gonna use my toddy glass. But you combine things together, stir it to combine, and then put some whipped cream on top of it and some grated nutmeg, which absolutely I most definitely have. So that's an ounce of whiskey, about 30 milliliters, three quarters of an ounce, or about 22 milliliters of simple syrup. I got some over here in my cooler. And three quarters of an ounce, uh, three, three and a quarter ounces of coffee, which is about, let's see, about 88 plus 15-ish. So like 100 something, 103, 103? Yeah, that makes sense. 103 ounces. Or sorry, pff, whoa. 103 milliliters of your coffee. I'll measure things out appropriately and you garnish it with whipped cream. Jeff says, bottle says Cologne on the front. La Cologne. La Cologne. I really like, I think La Cologne is a, this is the unsweetened medium roast and I, I like it. I very much, I, I think if I had to go for a particular cold brew solution that isn't just something that I made on my own in my fridge, I will like always go for this La Cologne unsweetened medium roast. I think it's delightful. This isn't cold brew concentrate. So, so to speak sp specifically about um, coffee for a moment, if you make cold brew concentrate like straight from the fridge, you made it on your own, you want to cut that with a bit for water because to take the 
To take the water that has been sitting with the coffee grounds for 24 hours or more straight is gonna be very, very, very caffeinated. You might give yourself an unwelcome jolt in the morning. This is not cold brew concentrate. This is just cold brew. This is, you can pour it into a glass, fill your mug up and you're gonna be okay. Cold brew concentrate, you'll probably wanna fill up about half of your glass or maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on what your caffeine like tolerance is and then fill the rest up with water. Give a little bit of a stir and you've got quite equivalently cold brew coffee. It's just the thing. I like that. I like this particular one. And it says on the front that it's Arabica, but it also says Colombian coffee, which makes sense of why they call it La Colom. Otherwise, I feel like it'd be a little misleading. But what else did we need? We needed our Jameson, Irish whiskey, naturally. And we need some simple syrup, which I can grab from my cooler down there when the time is right. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add an ounce of whiskey to our container here. There is no ice associated with this. Again, you could use freshly brewed coffee, and I think the, the implication is that you would use freshly brewed coffee, but I really wanted to taste how my cold brew, the one that I like very much, would taste as an Irish coffee, so this is more so an exploration for me. I use this stream as an opportunity to try something that I think might benefit me because I really like the La Colombe cold brew, and I want to see what happens when you put liquor into it. So this is, this is for my enjoyment, for my exploration, and for everybody else to watch. I guess. But so in order to make your Irish coffee the way that I'm making it, you will add an ounce or about 30 milliliters of Irish coffee to our, whoa, Irish whiskey, a Jameson in this case, to your glass. And I think I might have just cut my finger on the metal cap there. I did, and I'm bleeding a little bit, but that is going to be fine. We'll keep that rascal wrapped, and I think we'll be okay. The next thing that we're going to add is three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of simple syrup. You the individual who are most definitely following along drinking coffee, drinking coffee at 10 o'clock p.m. are probably wondering whether you need to add the simple syrup or not. I think that this version of an Irish coffee is appealing to people who are a little more latte inclined, a little more Starbucks inclined, a little more like you go to the store and you don't really like straight up black coffee. You like with a bit of cream and sugar and stuff in it, which is a perfectly wonderful way to drink their coffee. I think that I think that's like the normal way of of drinking coffee i for one like my coffee black if i were doing this specifically for me i want to try the offer irish coffee but i probably wouldn't add anything to it anyways i wouldn't add any sweetening agents to it i don't like sugar in my coffee i don't like cream in my coffee although i do like going to starbucks and dunkin donuts and getting what i call the premium coffee beverages where you get the lattes that have all the milk and syrup and stuff in it so i'm not specifically a black coffee kind of girl but you know it's whatever i feel in the moment jeff asks blood sweat and tears night. Did you catch tears? I don't think I've teared up yet. Not necessarily. Although, you know, and it did kiss me. That's something to cry about. It was beautiful. In any case, I'm gonna grab myself some simple syrup. We need three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of that. My simple syrup is in a Campari container because I go through a lot of Campari because as you might've caught on earlier, I really like Negroni's that uses Campari. Three quarters of an ounce, about 22 milliliters in your glass here. Or perhaps if you know yourself better than, more so than the exploration that I want to do, you could probably skip on the simple syrup. You don't, you don't necessarily need it. If you like your coffee a little more bitter, a little more bean forward, so to speak. My ex used to be live, li used to live on McDonald's coffee. McDonald's, the myth, myth cafe stuff is actually pretty good. I think for a while, before I started just like, before I started realizing that like, regular coffee from the store is i really like i saw a, a little digression for a moment i really like espresso i really like espresso because the flavor is almost a little bit sour i think the only time that i like sour completely separate from lemon juice and citrus and stuff is when it finds when i find it in an espresso shot in an espresso cup i love the way that like sour tangy almost spicy potent espressos taste i love it I love it. And to be perfectly honest, for the most part, most coffees don't hit me that way. They don't get that same flavor. Some of them do. Every once in a while, I find a nice coffee type, either whole bean, ground, or otherwise. I think the last one was this Nicaraguan blend that I picked up in South Carolina. And the one before that was something that I picked up at a convention called Gen Con. And I believe it came from Tanzania. I loved this coffee. I love the way that it tastes. I ground it myself. I have a really cheap Mr. Coffee machine. I'd like to invest in something a little bit more than that. But I love the way that it tasted. It, it was almost like an espresso 
in terms of the subtle sourness, the subtle potentness, the subtle like powerfulness on your tongue, the flavorfulness, but it was a whole cup's worth. And it didn't get you totally wired like an entire cup's worth of espresso would do, because that's a whole different process and it's a lot more caffeinated. But, oh my god. I love that stuff. A Dunkin' Donuts coffee, a McCafe coffee, you know, just the regular coffee that you get from Starbucks just doesn't hit the same way. I still like it, because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a coffee guy. I like, I like black coffee, but it doesn't hit the same way, so to speak. In any case, my digression on coffee is over. I think at some point, I, I like coffee so much, I want to do another. I did a coffee cocktail stream one time, and I want to do another. There will, there will be more coffee cocktails eventually because I love finding more and different ways to take the coffee and to spice things up a little bit, so to speak. So back to the cocktail. The next thing, after you add your ounce of Irish whiskey and your three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup, you're gonna add three and a quarter ounces specifically of coffee. You can freshly brew it. You can pour it over. You can French press it. You can Keurig it. You can uh, Chemex it. I don't know what the thing is called where you put the grounds at the top, you put the water in the bottom and you put it on the stove and it bubbles over the top. I don't know what it's called, but my buddy has it and it tastes really good. Mm. But whatever the way you get your coffee, mine was bought from the store at about three ounces or about 80 something milliliters, 103 ounces, 103 milliliters. I've said that wrong twice now of your coffee, whatever you have. I'm using a La Colombe. Oh, percolate, percolator, percolator. You're right, Jeff. That was exactly what I'm talking about. I had that one time, it was the first time I had that. I went to his house and he was like, yeah, this is how you use it. You put the coffee in the top, you put the water in the bottom. I was like, and that makes coffee? I was like, yes, it does. It was so good. Oh my God, it was so good. I also picked up vanilla, vanilla tea from this guy. Fire, beautiful. We're gonna add, I'm gonna, yeah, we're gonna add coffee to it. Mine's cold brew and I bought it from Giant and it's La Cologne brand. It's Colombian and 100% Arabica. I add two full ounces. I add a single ounce fourth. And then I add an extra quarter because you gotta do the cooking by the book. Otherwise, I, 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 I don't know. And then, now what I've added to the libation so far, I gotta, I gotta take these things and put them off the side. Otherwise I can't get my angle over there. I've added everything to the, to the libation except for the whipped cream that goes up on top. An Irish coffee, for all intents and purposes, completely without the idea of a recipe behind it, take your coffee, serve it the way that you like to. Do you like it as a latte, cappuccino, macchiato, affogato, whatever? Make it. Then add Irish whiskey to it. That's it. That's, that's really all there is to it. Maybe you want to sweeten yours up with some Bailey's Irish cream, something that is also alcoholic and based off of Irish whiskey. You could do that. In this case, that is not what the recipe calls for. But there are so many, it's, it just all comes back to there's so many different ways to cocktail and there's no incorrect answer. The correct answer is whatever tastes best to you. And if you are the kind of person who wants to go out there and figure out the exact proportions to make your Irish coffee taste right, you have all the freedom in the world to do so. However, if you're trying to find a good place to start based off of other people's recommendations, this might be a good place to find that. My fingers are wet, so I am... I'm doing that thing again. But the next thing that I'm going to need is I'm gonna to need to garnish this naturally with whipped cream and freshly grated nutmeg. So allow me to, for a moment, go into my fridge, because I forgot about that as well, to get my whipped cream and grab my nutmeg container. Hopefully nothing has gone bad. That would be very, very disappointing. I know I have nutmeg. Here's an old nutmeg. Gotcha. Got my, got my two reagents here. We'll bring my little cocktail angle over here. Try not to knock things over, it seems, and give a nice view of our, our Irish coffee. I will admit, I realize that this particular angle does not work super, super well. There is, it's a black, it's a black background. It's a black cocktail. It doesn't work as well, eh, blah, 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 whatever. It's gonna be okay. So how I'm going to finish this off is I'm gonna take my whipped cream, actually. Try to remove it from the container. I'm having a hard time with it. Please get off. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I don't know. Anyways, whipped cream up on top. Whatever you deem necessary. There we go. That's looking pretty good. Pop that sucker back on. We're gonna take a little bit of nutmeg. 
Take one of my nutmegs. It's nice. Actually, go to the store and buy yourself some whole nutmeg. It lasts you a while. If it decides to come out of the container. It's stuck. There we go. And it so easily came out. Grab yourself a grater. Like this. And just grate your nutmeg over the top. That's the best angle. That's a good angle. And just put it back. That's it. Grating nutmeg is so, so easy to do. And it is so much more, more worth it than getting like some pre-grated stuff. Because, oh God, it's so... It's a little, it's a little woodsy. It smells like nutmeg, obviously, but it's a little, it's a more woodsy. When you smell that, it's almost like tree bark. It's a really, really good smell. God, I freaking love it. In any case, that was our solution to the Irish coffee. There are many different ways to play, but this is the, this is the, this is the way that we played this time. Making a gambling analogy, I suppose. We'll see. And that contained, it's essentially a latte with your sweetener and your coffee combined with Irish whiskey, some whipped cream on top with a little bit of gr uh, grated nutmeg as well. And this recipe came from specifically um, foodandwine.com, the Irish coffee according to them. I also have, for some reason, I don't know when I curated this recipe, but it also says that another way to make it is with two sugar cubes, six whole ounces of brewed coffee, a third of an ounce plus a single ounce of Tullamore Dew Irish whiskey, heavy cream, lightly whipped. So essentially in that case, you're making your own whipped cream. You're using a different type of Irish whiskey. You're, instead of opting for the syrup, you're opting for the, the, um, the solid component and you're adding more coffee to it. So it's a little more coffee forward. It feels like it's going back to the same, um, analogy of the old fashioned and whether you add your solid sugar or you add your liquid sugar or whether you express your peel or you muddle at the bottom. I don't know. You, you do your Irish coffee the way you do your Irish coffee. This is the way we did our Irish coffee. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Taking a couple sips of that, it is, is very... I'm mixing it up a little bit more because I'm not really getting... I'm not getting something that I like there. It just kind of tastes like coffee with syrup in it for now. There's a little bit of a tinge there from the Irish whiskey that I know is in there. But I'm not really a big fan of it right now. So I've mixed it up a little bit. I'm incorporating the rest of the whipped cream in there. I'm making sure that if there was any separation happening between the alcohol and the coffee that I've mixed it all in there. It does match the Guinness in color. Well, it doesn't match the Guinness anymore. I just I just mixed the thing up and uh, this is a very, yeah, this is a very, very creamy base color now, all things considered. Um, however, I actually, so I mixed it, before I mixed it, wasn't a big fan. Now that I've mixed it, this kind of tastes like a latte that I would get at a, like a Dunkin' Donuts or like a Starbucks. The nutmeg has a nice little tinge to it. I think this would benefit more for my particular flavor palette, for more Irish, uh, for more coffee. Cause I really like coffee. So I'm actually gonna add I'll add another ounce of coffee in there. And I started with three ounces plus a quarter. Three and a quarter ounces. Made a little bit of a mess. First. I think that's probably best for me because I really like a very coffee forward drink. But it really does taste like, I mean, I did a little bit of research a while ago because I'll admit, every once in a while, I, I get a little unmotivated when I do my work sometimes. I feel like that's the same that's the, that's the same thing as a lot of people as well. And one of the things that I find when I, it, the, uh, when I, a little honesty for a moment there, vulnerability, it's a scary thing to do. However, sometimes I get a little unmotivated when I'm doing work or even when I'm doing stream stuff and whatnot. And I think one of the ways that I kind of cope with that, that I kind of get around that is to change something up. If I'm sitting there and I'm like, man, I'm just not feeling it right now. Sometimes I'll go out and I'll grab myself a coffee or something, or I'll go out and I'll grab myself some tea, some boba tea, or I'll go down to the coffee machine and I'll try to see if there's anybody around like worth chatting to and stuff. Or one time I Googled, cause I was at home this time, how to make like a Starbucks 
coffee because I really, really wanted to go to the store and buy like a Starbucks latte. I fall victim to my desires and stuff. And I was like, how do you make that at home? And quite honestly, it was make your coffee, add some cream to it, add some sweet cream to it. How do you make sweet cream? Take regular cream, add sugar to it, add some whipped cream to it and mix that with your coffee. And that's literally all it took. And it made something, it took something that was coffee forward without the sweetness and then just the right amount of sweetness to it and the cool thing was like i was able to make it on my own and it completely turned my day around it was like two o'clock i felt unmotivated and those next three hours went by like nothing because i just had i don't know i just did something a little bit different it was it was it was good very very good i did not have alcohol in it that's for the evenings self-control i guess oh yeah i added a bit more coffee to that it's balancing the, the sweetness level because you can change it however you want to is wonderfully balanced there it's not as dry and not as bitter as pure black freshly brewed coffee would be at least in my case maybe i've been brewing it wrong but it's it's very very good it tastes like something i would order out at a restaurant and to be fair there is alcohol in this there is irish whiskey in this i can't really tell this is this is very hidden. I'm not tasting the Guinness. I'm not just tasting the Jameson at all. This tastes like I straight up went to Starbucks and I just took this home and it's been sitting on my counter for a little while because it's not specifically cold or it's not really really hot. That's good. It's a stealth drink. Yeah, I mean there's not a lot of Irish whiskey in there anyways. It was what an ounce and a half, ounce and a half, about 44 milliliters at 40 percent. So you take that. 40 let's see what was it 44 milliliters 40 percent of that four times four 16 16 point i don't know like 20 it's like am i doing that right 40 yeah that's like 20 ounces of alcohol in there 20 ounces that's it or about two-thirds of an ounce of actual alcohol in there i think the math works out that way Out of the um however much i put in there i don't remember in any case irish coffee it's tasty um honestly you can make your own irish coffee or just alcoholic coffee in many different ways step one brew your coffee step two make your coffee the way that you like it add some sugar add some cream add some ice cream to it affogato affogato how to make a affogato just kidding it's a pun i guess I forgot to make how to have anyways but um and then add alcohol to it there are so many different ways to play you can add various different cream liqueurs you can add your baileys in there the my favorite i think is i've taken just regular coffee and i've added some um chai cream to it specifically the brand is somrus somrus is the only chai cream liqueur that i've ever come across it's delightful and it's very 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 tasty and i would highly recommend it in any case before i completely go through this irish coffee I should probably put it off to the side. It's very good. Um, I have one more cocktail planned for this evening. So we will move on to it. I think for the most part, just to do a quick summary of where we've been so far, we've done, I think to my knowledge, all of the very prominent Irish drinks that you would order around the St. Patrick's the St. Patrick's Day Aaron Express season. I've gotten the Irish car bomb, aka the Irish shot. I've we've done the Irish coffee. We've all, we've also done I feel for the most part. I feel like those are the two main things that you're gonna order uh, out of the bar. But we've also done a black velvet, which is combines champagne and Guinness together, or an Irish stout equivalently. I use Prosecco, but we're not gonna, this is gonna be our little secret. Um, and then what else did we do? We did the Shamrock cocktail, which is kind of a, it's it's something different. It's just a cocktail that I was able to make the excuse that we put some green food dye into it, which combines dry vermouth, whiz, Irish whiskey, and either creme de menthe or peppermint schnapps or peppermint creme de menthe together. It's a different, it's a different combo. Honestly, wasn't expecting that, but it tastes pretty good. It's kind of like a minty-ish whiskey martini. And all things considered, it tastes pretty good, I would say. Um, and that's kind of what we landed. I think there's nothing else that we've covered so far, right? Oh, and we also did an Irish Old Fashioned, which is just an Old Fashioned with your Irish whiskey in it. Um, there are many ways to Old Fashioned. We did ours our way, and that is okay. And it still tastes good. Yep. 
It's a lot more watered down now. The ice has had a chance to melt there. It's very good. We like that. But there's one more cocktail that I want to go through this evening. And it kind of... It's not specifically St. Patty's Day themed. Instead, it's more, I guess it's more, I guess it's more Irish themed, I suppose. It's something that I wanted to cover because I found it while I was uh, curating and looking through cocktail recipes for this evening. And I just wanted something a little more, a little more, I guess, historical, I suppose. And it's called the Emerald Cocktail. And I'm gonna write it up on my board and then we'll get right to it. No more Irish coffee. Can't really maybe enjoy that in the morning because it tastes really good. Very, very tasty. It's called the Emerald. Not Emerald, as in that famous chef. Emerald. So the Emerald Cocktail is actually kind of, I have it marked in my collection as a riff and a modification. It uses Irish whiskey, red vermouth, bitters, ice cubes, and orange peels. And you may be th like a expressed orange peel. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, whiskey, vermouth, and bitters, that's not, that kind of sounds like a Manhattan. And it is. It's basically a Manhattan. Manhattans, I think, are most predominantly made with rye whiskey, but in this case, we're subbing out for an Irish whiskey, which, according to this, Jameson is the one that's preferred there. The sweet red vermouth is preferred for a Carpano, Carpano red, which I happen to have in my collection as well. And orange bitters, also preferably Angostura. It just so happens that I have all the different brands that are associated with what came from twofoodtrippers.com specifically for the Emerald Cocktail. And so the Emerald Cocktail has a little bit of a history to it. And although I could, re I could read the entire article from Two Food Trippers, I just want to cover the highlights. So the Emerald Cocktail is proof that there are many roads to cocktail bliss. It's a fine Irish whiskey cocktail, and it's easy to craft and also easy to sip. Crafting it reminds us of the deep sea with a bottom that is practically impossible to reach. Every time we craft one of them, we discover that there are many, many more cocktails that are similar, but different variations of the cocktail that we crafted previously. That, in this case, is a Manhattan. Obviously, you got your red vermouth in there, you've got your vermouth in there, your sweet vermouth, your whiskey, and you also have your bitters on top of it. So the Emerald Cocktail, you might think, might be green, but instead, it's amber-colored. The moniker has everything to do with the heritage of the primary ingredient, in this case being the Irish whiskey, the Emerald Isles. Irish, I, the Ireland. No, to nobody's surprise, Irish whiskey hails from Ireland, obviously, but unlike the Emerald Cocktail, Ireland is known as the Emerald Isle due to the abundance of grasslands and general greenery. Think of the cocktail as more of a tribute to the Irish nation, more so than its color there. So that's kind of what we're going on there. I just saw Wayne popping in over there. Howdy. Happy Aaron Express to you, and happy St. Patty's Day. The last cocktail that we're covering this evening is the Emerald Cocktail, not named for its color, although we can most certainly add orange, uh, green food dye to it if we wanted to. But it's more so because it is a another classic cocktail, kind of like the Irish Old Fashioned that we made before, that just kind of takes one cocktail and sums it out with a particular ingredient in this case. I'd like to take a moment to like just think about, like, it's interesting to think that there are entire, like you can make an entire new cocktail specifically based off of subbing out a single ingredient or taking one ingredient and making it a little bit more specific. For example, the Manhattan case in point uses whiskey, rye whiskey, recommendedly, red sweet vermouth, as well as some bitters. Angostura probably, some sort of like aromatic bitters in this case. You could quite literally say, I'm gonna make a new cocktail by making my own set of bitters that nobody has ever seen before, and I'm just gonna put it in Manhattan. It's still rye whiskey, it's still red vermouth, sweet vermouth, but I'm just gonna add different bitters to it, and you could probably call it something different. You can take, this case, you have a Manhattan, which is, in this case, used with, uh, made with Irish whiskey, specifically. And instead of Angostura bitters, specifically, you're gonna call for orange bitters. Angostura in this case and it's just kind of it's just kind of interesting to think that you can just sub out a single ingredient and call it a whole new cocktail and I think the reason for that is especially in, in a cocktail like a Manhattan where there's only really three main ingredients with or without the orange slice obviously or the orange peel in this case as very astutely pointed out by Wayne is that 
It, complete, it can completely change the characteristics of the drink. A lot of times you can think of cocktails as being formulas, the recipes themselves. For example, a Negroni. If you break that down, there is gin, there's Campari, and there's sweet vermouth. You can sub out the sweet vermouth with something else that fills the same category. I'm not as familiar with all my vermouths, but so I'll leave that for more of the experts out there. But you can sub out your gin with a different space spirit. You can sub it out with a tequila, and you could call it like a uh, Oaxacan Negroni if you wanted to. You could sub it out with a mezcal, and you can call it a smoky Negroni. I'm actually quoting particular recipes that I know that I've curated in the past, and all they do is sub out a single ingredient. You could probably take a different citrus wheel and say, I'm going to put lime on top of it and call it something different as well. You could sub out the, the Campari, which is a bitter liqueur, with some other bitter liqueur, like an Amaro Nonino or an Amaro Montenegro or some other Amaro, and call it something completely different it's just kind of cool that the the subbing the subbing in this particular case can create something that is vastly different have a whole nother background to it but still kind of pay homage and amends to what you find before wayne thank you for popping into the bar you are more than welcome to have a seat there sir jeff also made a comment saying like if you take marshmallows and lucky charms you just have cheerios you take lucky lucky charms without the marshmallows you have lucky charms exactly i like let's see i was trying to think of something I was thinking of Captain Crunch, like oops all berries, where you take out all the Captain Crunch and you just leave the berries behind. I feel like it's a very similar argument there. But yes, Bloody Marys as well. You can change out your Bloody Marys. You could say, oh, well, I'm not a British guy. I'm not going to use the Worcestershire sauce. Instead, I'm going to use, I don't know, maybe you have like a really awesome wings place in your area that does a very, very, very good sweet habanero hot sauce. And you sub out the Tabasco and the Worcestershire and all this other stuff and the soy or whatever. And you do like that and you have a whole new Bloody Mary. Or instead of using vodka, you use a tequila to the same exact point. You, it's like, a, it's a bloody, I think it's a bloody Juan. I think they call it if you sub it out with like a tequila. And in any case, I've digressed enough about the subtle changes that you can make to a cocktail and make a completely different cocktail. And I think that's like there was a piece of me that was very shocked by this thinking like there's no way that you just changed one ingredient and made your own cocktail i can't believe that that is way too easy but that's the thing it's way too easy if you think about it if there are an infinite number of combinations for a particular three ingredient drink and you sub out one of them you've taken a piece of that infinity and called it your own that's actually kind of cool i think there's a certain splinter on that but in any case, in this in this example, we're gonna go for the emerald, the emerald cocktail, which is not green unless we make it, which I plan on making it green because I have food dye. And it's essentially just a Manhattan with some Irish whiskey. And instead of using Angostura bitters in this case, we're gonna use orange bitters. And we're gonna mix it the same way that I mix my own Manhattans, uh, which I usually use a half an ounce of red vermouth, but I'm gonna go the full ounce this time. I wanna see what it tastes like. And we're gonna go with that. Instead of using vodka, vodka, in tequila, you use beer. That's an interesting idea. I kind of like that idea. I'm gonna write that idea. I'm gonna write that down. I really like things that I, cause I, I'm not, I'm not much of a beer drinker, all things considered. But subbing, was it vodka with beer? If I may pry into that a little bit further, Wayne, is that specifically for your Bloody Marys or that for other cocktails as well? Because beer is a whole other thing. I particularly like IPAs, just to give my own little uh, aspect on it. I like IPAs. I like the bitter component of it. Well, let's make thing. Let's make thing happen. Usually, when I do a Manhattan, I will stir it and I will strain it out using like a julep strainer. The instructions here, according to two food trippers, is you pour everything into a mixing glass, add a dash, handful of ice cubes, stir until chilled. And it's the same thing. We're also stirring and we're training. Specifically for Wayne's Bloody Marys. I like the way that sounds. Honestly, I will, I will be honest. I haven't had a lot of Bloody Marys. I, with some point of what I want to do is I want to do a whole Bloody Stream. Not to curse on you. But I want to see all the different ways that you can make Bloody Marys. With different types of sauces and spicy components and tomato juices and otherwise. It's just, I haven't gotten to it yet. But one day I want to explore that. So the first thing we'll grab is obviously our Irish whiskey, which I still happen to have over on the side over here. And we will add that to our particular, or in this case, our stirring container. Usually what I do is I would add the ice first. I don't really mind the extra dilution from leaving the ice in there with the correspondingly warm ingredients. But well, do the you gotta, gotta do the cooking by the book, or else we're never gonna we're never gonna learn anything about the various different styles and ways to mix your cocktails are. So, first thing that we'll do is my uh, fluid ounce jigger is looking really, really dirty. 
over in my container. Excuse the sound. And I'm gonna use my metric jigger for this one. So we're gonna add two ounces or about 59 ish milliliters. In this case, I'm using a metric jigger, so it's about 50 milliliters of your Irish whiskey to your mixing glass before adding ice. Don't add your ice just yet. Fill that all the way to the top of, if you have a big end of your jigger, just fill it all the way to the top, put it on the inside. Simple and easy. I'll put that off to the side. The next thing we're gonna add is a single ounce of red vermouth, sweet vermouth. In this case, I'm gonna use a Caprina Antica. I keep telling myself that I took everything out of the fridge, but I am continuing to prove myself wrong because uh, I forgot about my Carpano. So, go for my, go for my Carpano. Jeff says, things are crashing. Things are crashing? Oh my goodness. Things are making funny, funny sounds over here. Hopefully nothing super duper crashing. I hope not. Is my, is my cocktail angle still working? It is still working, which is a good thing. I've got some really weird, I've had some weird technical difficulties around here recently. And um, if I didn't fess up to them, I'd consider myself dishonest. One ounce or about 30-ish milliliters of your uh, sweet vermouth of choice. I'm running really, really low on my Carpano. So I should definitely go get some more because I love this stuff. Again, like making my Negronis, so I'm into it. Wayne says, all I do is V8 tomato juice and salt, pepper, and Tabasco sauce and whatever your favorite beer is. I gotta ask, are you more of a lager person? Are you a fan of lagers, ports, specific types of beers? What is your favorite beer? I'm very curious about that. There are so many different types of beers out there. Personally, I like to use, I like porters, I like stouts. I'm not a big fan of lagers, but I'm also a fan of pilsners. So those are my particular types of beers. And I also like, like sours, like sarios and stuff like that. And IPAs. I like things with a bitter component, a flavorful fruities component, or a deep chocolatey coffee-ish component. Those are my favorite types of beers. So you have those there. Bush beer is cheap. It's true. Dude, Bush comes in those. It's a very recognizable container. I respect that. So next, in addition to the two ounces that we added of our Irish whiskey, our one ounce or about 30 milliliters of the sweet vermouth in this case, we're gonna add a single dash, one dash of orange bitters. When I make my Manhattans, I'll do anywhere between like two to three dashes of the bitters. In this case, it only calls for one. So that's all we're doing. That's all that the recipe calls for. So I will I will go with that. Next, we're gonna now add the ice to the container as the instructions are telling us to do. I would say for the, when I mix my own cocktails, I am not a stick with the instructions. If the cocktail calls for a particular spirit, I will usually not follow the instructions to a T, but as I'm doing these more exploratory stuff, I like to follow and see what the recipe book says because there might be a different angle to it that I'm just not considering. Like for example, the dilution of the ice or I don't know, temperature and the uh, density and stuff. Who really knows? BRB, see you in a bit, Wayne. So we're gonna, now that we've added our ice to it, we're going to stir things up. We are going to then strain it out into a cocktail glass, which has an orange peel on top of it, naturally. And it doesn't say that you put ice into the glass itself. Drop the orange peel into the glass as a garnish, naturally. So let me give this thing a little bit of a stir. So we'll go back to it. Jeff says, that's not an ice cube. That's an iceberg. Look at the mass of this thing. Let's stir that up. I've used quite a few bar spoons this time, so I'm gonna use this one instead. Let's kind of stir that. So many different ways to stir. Six to seven, six to eight seconds. Or however long it feels like you now feel that it's awkward to be staring at the camera. It has now become awkward. So I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna stop stirring. And I'll put these things into my, my bucket because the honorary bucket gets used. I'll also clean up some of my other stuff as well. Put those into there, hopefully not break any glass along the way. That is not intentional. If we do, or do not. All right, cool. So now all you have to do is strain it into the container of your choice. In this case, I'm gonna use an old fashioned glass because it feels very, very similar. So I'm gonna grab one of the ones that I have on the side. I'm gonna use this guy because I'm not stirring so I can use this little dice one. I like this particular glass. It was a gift from a friend of mine. So when you use your julep strainer, 
you'll want to I don't remember what the rule was uh, one of my one of my other cocktail mixologists who popped on stream one time told me the rule to use a julep strainer versus the, jul uh, the rule to use otherwise so I'm just gonna pour it over top simple and clean nice and diluted beautiful beautiful and then I'm just gonna grab one of my other oranges gonna peel a peel off real quick one of these guys and uh we will express over the top that was an okay peel i think express this is kind of a long one i'm gonna take a little bit more effort and then pop it on the inside that's all there is put that orange away that's all there is to it i like that glass gimme you can buy these on amazon they're actually, they're not, the, they're not too bad. They're not too bad. I will say the dice sometimes pop out. I've had to super glue these things back in a little bit, but it was a wonderful gift from a buddy of mine who bought me, he bought me this, these glasses, and he also bought me, oh, I was so excited to try this, this Mr. Black coffee liqueur, Amaro. Ooh, it's so good. When you make your Negronis, if you want a coffee Negroni, but instead you want it with a little bit of coffee, so if you make your Negroni, instead of using Campari, use the Mr. Black orange amaro it is so tasty it's so good my friend apparently loves me very much so this was the emerald cocktail it is essentially a manhattan but you use irish whiskey specifically now if it's called an emerald i'm inclined to think that you have to make it green so i want to i want to smell it first and then i want to taste it, it smells very very orangey I'm getting notes of the Carpano in there, but it's very, very potently orange, probably because I expressed the oils and there's some orange bitters in there as well. That's pretty good. I think the bottle of Antica that I'm using is a little bit old. I'm almost to the bottom of it, so. I'm about to go to the store. I'm probably going to go to the store next week and get some more. It's a little, it's a little less on there. Oh, Rich Snow, my guy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I will say for all the people who wind up contributing in any way out there, it goes right back into the bar. This is the reason that we can make more spirits. It's the reason that we can buy more things. Um, I also have a full-time job too. So it also contributes from my own pockets as well, but it is greatly, greatly appreciated to have a new VIP. It's very, very good very tasty i think my carpano probably could be a little more probably be a little more fresh i know the one time that i had my buddy eric on a fellow mixologist of mine a uh, very good friend of mine as well he's moving away soon i'm really sorry to see that but he taught me how to properly taste the whiskeys how to properly make a manhattan taking into account all the different subtle components again it's a very very simple drink it doesn't use that many ingredients. So every single ingredient counts there. And one of the things that are really, that, that I personally believe in now is that if you were going to make a Manhattan, something like that, and you're gonna use a sweet red vermouth, you should really get a fresh bottle. You don't need to go, unless you're making a lot of Manhattans or a lot of things that use the vermouth, you don't wanna keep that thing in your fridge for very, very long. Maybe a month or so at like maximum, but you get the, get the small bottles. You, if you, if you, you, if you make a lot of the stuff, you can get the big bottle and you can go through it. But I was also somebody who kind of had this big bottle of vermouth in my, co in my collection. And it took me two years to go through this bottle of Martini and Rossi sweat, sweet red vermouth of mine. And it tasted weird after a while. And it started tasting like, it, it was like, ah, oh, this Manhattan isn't really that good. Or like this, this, uh, this other drink that I use with bitters. I'm, I'm blanking on other ones with bitters right now. Um, like sours or whatever i said bitters i'm sorry vermouth duh um but i was like eh, it's okay it's not really my kind of drink uh but then he showed me specifically around like the uh december time christmas season holiday season and he was like no, no no you gotta use a fresh bottle and i went to the store i bought a fresh bottle i cracked that thing open and right then and there made a new manhattan with it it was like it was it was totally different it was the exact same Manhattan that I had made so many times before, but it tasted so much more deep, so much more flavorful, so much more enjoyable because I knew how to drink it, to enjoy it. Uh, I knew the best ways to, in this case, to stir it in this case and pour it out, but also just to know how to treat the ingredients well. I mean, I think is a, it's, it's, a, it's an important lesson to learn, I think. It sounds a little, I'll admit, it sounds a little pretentious. If you like what it is, if you like what's in your glass, 
and you have vermouth that's been sitting on the, the shelf for three years, then that's fine. That's also totally okay. Although, at least in my particular case, I think that it really does matter to use your fresh ingredients if you have them. If it's within your budget. If it's too expensive to go buy vermouth every once in a while, especially the nicer stuff, don't. Don't put yourself out of house at home just for a, a, a fancy drink. I don't think it's really worth it. Jeff says, Jeff says, make it with love. That's what it's all about. And this particular emerald cocktail. Is that what tasted it again? It was very nice. I think... There is, it's very strongly flavored of the Carpana Antica, which in my opinion is a very nice flavor. It's got a little bit of, it's got some dark cherry notes to it. It's got some, obviously some bitter notes to it. A little bit of an acetic, like acid note there from almost vinegary, but because it's been sitting for a little while. But the Irish whiskey, from what I've said before, Jameson to me is very, very smooth. Kind of flapjacky, like the pancake itself. It's almost like butter. And it makes this particular Manhattan a lot more smooth not as dry much more in my opinion pal palatable sippable S like chuggable honestly i could probably chug this cocktail but it's really good and i think it's better to savor this a little more savory now that i say the word and i like that comparatively to other other uh bourbons and whiskeys and stuff out there wayne says i'm back i just had to get me a drink oh what are you drinking this evening wayne i'm very very curious we got more durable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, with the Irish whiskey, because I think the Irish whiskey, at least from what I found, and and again, I've been, I am as of now speaking, 25 years young, and I have been drinking for officially four years, but maybe a little bit longer than that. Depends on how moral you are about laws and stuff. I'm very moral. I've only been drinking for four years. But in those four years, I have found that Jameson, specifically, this Irish whiskey, goes down very, very smooth. And I, I don't really know the best way to explain that. It's buttery, I guess. Now that I know a little bit more now than I did about cocktails four years ago, it's almost buttery. And I guess if you describe something as buttery, you describe it as smooth. Maybe it's got to do with the triple distillation. Maybe it's got to do with something else entirely. I don't really know. But I really, really like it. It's very tasty in Manhattan. I'm sorry, an emerald cocktail. So. Jeff says, enjoyable cocktail as opposed to the violent peppermint drink. The shamrock is a little intense. I will say that. If you use peppermint liqueur in that, you are, you are in for a little more of a violent time. And so naturally, I, I just want to, if you call yourself an emerald drink and you, you know, you're know you wonderful, you're smooth, you're tasty, it's a wonderful version of Manhattan, but you called yourself an emerald drink for a reason. So the chaotic good in me is saying that we have to make it green. So I have green food coloring. So I'm going to drop food coloring inside of it. And I'm going to make it green. <laughs> because you called yourself the Emerald Cocktail. And by goodness, if I don't make this a green, putrid green color, I don't know what the hell I'm doing over here. I added a lot of food coloring in there. And I used my knife. I will clean it. There we go. And now it's green. How green is it? I don't know. I think it actually needs to be more green. One second. Let me, let me light this up from the bottom. Mm, that's not green enough. You're called the Emerald for a reason, aren't you? I'll use my muddler. I used this with one of the other ones before. I already threw my knife away. I threw my knife away. I put it in the bucket. The bucket gets cleaned every week. Mm, that still doesn't look very green to me. So how many drops does it take to make this cocktail green? I put even more in there. It's the chaotic in me that does this. Um, that definitely looks green now. Is it green enough though? I don't know, man. I don't know, dog. Feels pretty green. Does that look like emerald? I feel like emerald has a very dark hue to it. So I would say for all intents and purposes, this is the emerald cocktail. And so we will, we will treat it as such. I actually kind of like the way that looks. So I'm going to take a quick photo of it did i do that correctly oh i definitely did not type that correctly there we go i did that totally i i can't even spell things correctly on my own stream it's incredible in any case um it's an emerald but now it's emerald color so that is um i wonder if it tasted a different i honestly am curious to see whether or not the emerald cocktail tastes differently with that food coloring in it Oh, 
Mm -hmm. Mm, a little bit. It's a little... Mm. It's really not that noticeable, I will admit. Wayne says, it is a shot of Kentucky Deluxe Bourbon and a shot of Old Smuggler Scotch and half a shot of Jim Bean and a half a shot of Black Velvet in a Dr. Pepper. If I hope you don't mind, I am absolutely going to take a photo of that because I want to make sure that I have that recipe because that sounds absolutely delightful, Wayne. Potato! I should have a potato. <laughs> I love that idea of having a potato come in. I'm going to add that to my next opportunity. To be fair, knowing that there is drinking that happens on this stream and that we get a little bit tipsy every once in a while, uh, the fact that I've never misspelled the word photo before, I've never spelled photo, 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 photo before, but this is an excellent idea. I like the, I like the idea, I'm going to completely digress from him, so please forgive me. The potato command. It is a command that gives you either a random fact about a potato, or it sends you a link to a picture of a potato, or it gives a random translation of the word potato in other languages. I know that potato in German is Kartoffeln. It's a thing. I promise you that. Go for it. I'm a mixologist, so... Oh, yo, wait, you mixologist? You... Oh, my God. Can you tell I've had a couple of drinks so far? Glad to see that there are more mixologists out there. Many more. Many more. Yeah, all things considered, this... Irish Manhattan, aka the Emerald, with a bunch of, like, an ungodly amount of uh, green food dye added to it. It is green now. It is emerald colored now. It's it's beautiful. And it really doesn't taste too much different. There's not a lot of flavor imparted by this food dye. Well, now I'm really curious. Oh, that's so sweet. Wow. So I just put food dye on my tongue. And it's very, it's very sweet. It's a very, very sweet flavor. So I think it did make this a little sweeter. Cl throw out the curdled Guinness mess, Cameron. Oh my God, Jeff, you just reminded me. This is the end of the stream. This, this is it. I, I've done enough cocktails this evening. I'm a little tipsy and we're having, I'm, I'm, I'm Jay chilling right now, as the kids would say. And all things considered, allow me to recollect what we covered this evening as I realize how sweaty I am and how I should definitely go to bed because it's getting it's getting laid out over here. So, thank you everybody for coming around. We'll do a little bit of a roundup of what we've found so far for our cocktails this evening. The first drink that we started out with was something that they call a black velvet. A black velvet is quite literally equal parts champagne and Guinness or Irish stout. You could use champagne or you could use Prosecco. It's really whatever you want it to be. I tried it about five times now and I still don't like it. I think it's because I use Prosecco. Uh, it calls for champagne. Champagne is more dry than Prosecco is. Prosecco is traditionally a little more sweet. There's a more sweetening agent there. The actual semantics of it are beyond the scope of this stream. But I don't think it really benefited from it. I'm not a big fan of it. So I move on to the next one. The next cocktail that we did was this Irish Old Fashioned, which is Again, there are many different ways to old-fashioned out there. This one specifically used Irish whiskey as the whiskey or bourbon or rye whiskey component in the old-fashioned this time. It also used sugar cubes and simple syrup, and we muddled an orange peel, and we expressed the orange peel on top and garnished with it and added some bitters to it. It's, it's, it's really, really sweet. It's really sweet, and I like it. I like that. I'm very, I'm very much a fan of that. Wayne's popping in and saying that you don't use black velvet in the black velvet. Don't use black velvet. Black velvet, for the, for those who don't know, I actually know this particular spirit is a Canadian whiskey. Actually, your black velvet doesn't use whiskey. Although, I mean, to be fair, you could add. I guess you could t put your black velvet and instead of the Guinness, you could put Canadian whiskey. I guess. I made a. I made a. I had a maple stream. I had a Canada stream one time, and it was literally just me making a maple leaf sour, and I used Canadian whiskey. And I think I was drunk enough to convince myself that Canadian whiskey actually tasted like maple syrup. I don't think that's the case, but like maybe. So after the Irish old fashioned, we made what came next? Next, we made the Shamrock cocktails. The Shamrock cocktails, originally, according to Difford's Guide, is made with dry vermouth, Irish whiskey, a little bit of chilled water, 
peppermint, creme de menthe, which I didn't realize was a thing, and green chartreuse. Chartreuse is having a bit of a shortage right now. I've never tasted chartreuse before, either the green or the yellow variety. I think in this case it called for the green variety. Um, but some other books said, eh, don't worry about the chartreuse. Don't worry about the water. Instead, just take your Irish whiskey, take your creme de menthe, and take your dry vermouth and combine them together. We did one with peppermint, which I described as violent, and one that used creme de menthe. menthe. It was white creme de menthe. There's probably a difference with the green creme de menthe. And I added some green food dye to both of them. Evidently, the food dye is sweet. So, it made them a little bit more sweet. That's, that's all I have to say about those ones. After the Shamrock Cocktails, we moved into what some people call the Irish Car Bomb. I think more colloquially, I think it's a politically incorrect term now, depending on how you care about that statement. It's your politics views, not mine. We also call it an Irish Shot, which is half a shot of Bailey's, complied with half a shot of Jameson, Irish cream and Irish uh, whiskey, and you drop that into a full pint of Irish stout, or in this case Guinness, and you can take the whole damn thing down. It's sweet, it's delicious, it's vanilla-y, it's one of my favorite particular cocktail bombs to take, and it is delightful. Wayne's also saying that Canadian whiskey is some weak stuff. I've had stronger stuff. Since then, since my first Black Velvet, I have had rye whiskey. I've had other grain spirits, like Everclear. It's, it's pretty weak, comparatively. It's, it's nice. I, I have to go back to it. It was also cheap. That's why I bought it originally because I didn't care about myself. I just cared about my wallet. So after the Irish shot, we moved on to, I think it was the Irish coffee. Irish coffee is, it's coffee with Irish whiskey in it. There are so many different ways to Irish coffee. In this case, we took our coffee, which in my case was a cold brew. You can French press it. You can affogato it. You can, you can Chemex it. You can percolate it. Whatever the way that you coffee, you can add a whiskey to it. You can, you can absolutely bastardize a cup of coffee with Irish whiskey, no matter how you made the coffee. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter where the coffee is from. I say bastardized, but I actually kind of like it. In this case, we added some simple syrup to it as well. We add some whipped cream on top and grated some fresh nutmeg over top of it for this particular iteration of an Irish coffee. Kind of tasted like something you'd buy as a latte from like a Dunkin' Donuts or like a Starbucks or whatever. I didn't really taste the whiskey in it. I added more coffee to it because I like more coffee. I'm a black coffee kind of guy, so I was very much, I, I very much enjoyed it there. It's great. And uh, to be perfectly honest, it's probably still great now. Yep, still good. I love that. <laughs> K cup it. Dude, K cup it too. You can K cup it. You curig it. I actually specifically thought for this stream, I could have curigged it. I could have French pressed it. I could have. I don't have a percolator. Um, I took the lazy way out. I use. I use La Colombe. I like this stuff. It's a, it's a good, it's a damn good cold brew in my opinion. But after the Irish coffee, we, I wish, I wish, I wish I could have another Irish coffee. After the Irish coffee, we found ourselves here on the Emerald Cocktail. The Emerald Cocktail itself is basically just a Manhattan, except instead of using a rye whiskey as is traditionally used, we used Irish whiskey. Instead of using Angostura aromatic bitters as is traditionally used, we used Angostura orange bitters in this case. There are many different ways to orange bitters. I use this one instead. And it's pretty good. And we added some green food dye to it because, damn, if you're going to call yourself the Emerald Cocktail, you better be green. And as we found out afterwards, as I put the green food dye into my mouth, I wonder if my teeth are... Are my teeth green right now? I actually didn't even think about that until this very moment. Nah, they're fine. My teeth are looking beautiful. The rest of me looks a little bit green. But we made it green to look like an emerald, and that's... That's a wonderful thing. It's actually, it's a very, very good. It's a very, in my opinion, it's probably one of my, one of my favorite ways that I've had a Manhattan so far, because I specifically like the way that the whiskey tastes. It is not the same as a rye Manhattan. I will say that as much, but it's a different direction. And I also like it. It's a little more smooth. It's a little more mellowed out. And I, I think it's, I think it's very, very approachable, all things considered. Wayne says, you could have trucker's coffee. It's, I don't know what trucker's coffee is. Please educate me. I want to know. But in any case, that was what we covered this evening. There was a couple of different cocktails, and um, that was it. Which one of these stay? I don't know. I'm definitely throwing out the mess that is the rest of that um, Irish shot there over there. It is curdled to all hell. My God, this is... Oh my God, it is so solid right now. That like they, they say that if you pour a pint of Guinness properly, you could float a penny on top of that foam. Well, you don't even have to pour it properly in this case. There's no technique involved. If you add a little bit of you add a little bit of cream to that, you could probably float an, float an entire person on top of that. It's actually kind of disgusting. Dark brewed coffee is Trucker's Coffee. 
I'll take the orange one. Which one's the orange? Ooh. That was old-fashioned. And I think that is where we will end things this evening. Onwards to the next step of the process, which is the end screen. It's done. That's, that's it. The bar is closing. Closing time. Sublime is a wonderful band. In any case, I want to thank you all very much for popping around to the bitter, bitter end. Although some of these weren't very bitter, but some of them were, kinda. To the bitter end of the bar with an X. I am up here making cocktails pretty much every Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you enjoy that kind of stuff, if you want to learn new cocktail recipes, honestly, if you're the one looking at me and thinking, you're a young little shit, you don't know what you're talking about, please educate me. The only way that I am to learn is to learn from people who have been there before me. So if you are on your high horse thinking, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about, please step down for a moment and educate me, as opposed to sitting up there sniveling to yourself like you are. It's, it doesn't really matter. If you're enjoying your cocktail, that's really all that matters here. Thank you very much. Good, Great stream. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you, Jeff. Good vibes. Enjoy the stream. Have a good one. Thank you, Rich and I. Appreciate that. And to everybody, no matter where you are, maybe you learned something, maybe otherwise, that's okay. So long as you got a smile on your face, that's kind of what matters to me. And I got a couple, I got a, got a little bit of alcohol in me. I'm very happy with that as well, all things considered. Wayne, I would take that Emerald Green Manhattan. It's for you. Here. You can, you can have that. And in any case, thank you everybody so much for popping along into the bitter, bitter end. If the moon is shining where you are, and it is the evening like it is over here for me, it's about 10.55 p.m., almost 11 o'clock, may you have a wonderful rest of your night, a wonderful rest of your evening. If the sun is shining, and you are seeing the great world before you, and you are about to start your day, have a wonderful morning. Have a wonderful afternoon. May the rest of your day be fraught with good things and good vibes as well. Dawn, twilight, and otherwise, thank you. And I'll see you guys next time on another exciting episode of The Bar with the next. Until then, y'all, cheers. Bye. <laughs>